and that's what they're all about. And uh, as Wayne Carey walked onto the ground today, he looked up at the new grandstands and uh, effectively said, if you can't play footy in these conditions, Glennon, you can't play footy. <laughs> They've got to win a match today. You were getting a little bit restless and jittery there. Well, I must say, for the first time since I retired walking onto the field today, I was a bit jittery. Uh, and who would have thought Richmond to uh, three in a row? Mm. And, uh, and really, the Dockers have to win. Lost two close ones, could have easily uh, won those games, but haven't. So, big game. And the big news is, from a Fremantle Docker fan perspective, bad news. A virus has gone through the club. Three big names out. Matthew Card, Des Hedlund and Graham Polak. As we check the lineups, the Tigers saying they're going tall across the forward line. Who's going to get Matthew Richardson? Yeah, look, it's a big call. I think McFarlane will get uh, Richardson. I spoke to Chris Connolly yesterday on Saturday Central. Uh, he was uh, certain that Polak would get the job. He's out, so I think it'll go to McFarlane now. And he's uh, he's a guy that uh, we saw take a great mark last week. It'll be interesting to see how he goes on the high-flying Matthew Richardson. Through the midfield there, the Tigers' names, Tivendale, Coglin, and Hyde. Hyde has been stepping up in recent times. The Dockers, how much will they miss Matthew Carr with that midfield grunt? I think the Carr brothers have both been uh, superb so far this season. They have been in their best uh, three or four players. They've got uh, other options, of course, with Heath Black and Peter Bell. Byron Shammer, I think it's time that he uh, kicked on his great form of last season. So they've got plenty of options there, and uh, it is going to be a game that is going to swing on uh, who dominates the midfield. Farmer and Midhurst, so important keys to the Docker forward line. The Tigers off the rucks. Noble Tuck, who's been impressive, and Nathan Brown. Who's going to get Nathan Brown today? Yes, an interesting matchup. I'm not... I, I would say... Uh, what's, uh, Parker. I would say Parker. Sorry, mate. He nearly uh, slipped out of my mind there. He's an <laughs> underrated player, that's why. But uh, he has all the attributes to go with the Brown. He's quick, he's fast, he's strong. I think uh, he'll give Brown a very hard time. He, underrated player. And there's the starting benches for the Fremantle Dockers, including Johnson, who will come in to make his AFL debut with those three players withdrawing. It's a blue-collar midfield for the Tigers. Last week, a career-best 29 possessions for Hyde. Coglin, he turns 23 on Wednesday. Had a defensive role early on Cooney last week. That's right. It'll be interesting to see whether a Josh Carr goes to a Coglin or vice versa, a Coglin goes to a Josh Carr. Carr's been in sensational form in the middle, and as we know last week, Coglin got back into some form. So that could be a, uh, a matchup that uh, really uh, decides the game. Chris Hyde's been doing good jobs tagging Clinton. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pick up a Peter Bell. I know that uh, Terry Wallace rates him highly, and uh, I think Chris has been one of those players that uh, just has continued to get better. And for Fremantle, I've noticed in the recent times they've give, given young Thornton a couple of good jobs. If it's not Shane Parker, I wouldn't mind yeah. seeing Thornton on Brown. Yeah, perhaps time to step up 18 senior games in his four years at the club. Our fourth member of the team today is Wayne Schwoz. Here's his keys to winning. Tigers going for three in a row. Haven't done that since round six to eight last year during the 2004 season. They had a terrific win last week against the Bulldogs, primarily due to the fact their big spearhead up forward put on an absolute marking display. Strong marks on the lead, in amongst the pack, surrounded by opposition players. He was at his imposing best last week, missed a couple of sitters, but more importantly, went outside 50, game in the balance, tight angle, and kicked the goal when required. He needs some help this afternoon, though, and he'll have to get it from that man there on screen, Troy Simmons, against his old side, the Fremantle Dockers, this afternoon for the first time. Hasn't really hit his straps, but will certainly need to play his part this afternoon. For the Dockers, well, they've got two important players at opposing ends, namely Matthew Pavlich, who's only kicked six goals four, but presents himself as a definite target up forward. He'll have to play his role this afternoon. 22 inside 50s. There's no Frio player that has taken the ball inside forward 50 as much as Matthew Pavlich. Up the other end, he gets great support from Luke McFarlane. This man is a star on the rise. One's a goal stopper, one's a goal kicker, and they'll both need to play their roles this afternoon. Four of 19 games since 1995, the Fremantle Dockers won at the MCG. But importantly, three of the last five since 2002, their most recent win, a 10-point victory against the Tigers at this ground last year. And as we go to the break, let's hear from the man that keeps snakes as pets, Troy Simmons, about leadership at Richmond. I suppose coming here as a senior player and, um, you know, I need to show a fair bit of leadership and... Um, something I've worked on the last few years of Fremantle being in the leadership group there and you know, hopefully we can bring a fair bit of leadership to the younger guys and help develop them. And... I had an incident a couple of years ago where I had a massive growth spurt and tall four hamstrings in a year. But um, I think that it's it's finally settled down, I imagine. I think, well, comparing my measurements from this year, this time last year, I'm about the same, so hopefully that's it. <laughs> This is it, last roll of the dice. Fremantle was bottom of the Here we go. Oh, Luke McFarlane right on half time. Oh, it's magnificent stuff, isn't it? The Dockers, with a five-goal second term, will celebrate as Luke McFarlane does. 
anchors away last week for Luke McFarlane. Alas, the Fremantle Dockers squandering a 22-point lead to lose to the West Coast Eagles. They enter this match at 1-2. and two, Their ladder position beginning round 4-7. The Tigers 2-1-6. and one, sixth. Simply gorgeous Sunday afternoon. Fine. Might not reach the expected forecast top of 24, but for the 20 or so thousand here this afternoon, 21 degrees, just perfect. And the starting benches for the Fremantle Dockers. Michael Johnson set to make his AFL debut, the 20-year-old out of Perth, a pre-season draft selection. And Stephen Dodd, he's 21 years of age. It's his sixth senior game. Came here to the MCG for the first time ever on Friday night as the Kangaroos played Collingwood, had his camera out in wide-eyed wonderment, taking photos of everything. And now here he is playing and starting. And there's a good old Donnybrook that's already begun. A wrestle down in the Tiger forward line. Parker's there. Brown, the skipper of the Tigers, winning the toss and sending the Tigers to the city end. We might not get a centre bounce at this point with the push and the shove. And there's Longmuir, Justin, getting into Retcho. We mentioned there's a bit of heat on here. You heard from Chris Connolly in our opening remarks talking about Terry Wallace and his time in the media and having said a bit about the Fremantle Dockers, Terry's rebuttal was well he spoke about all 16 clubs in his two what? years in the press and we got the matchups well wrong, Parker guys. hasn't Letting gone to Brown, out. Parker's gone to nice. Matthew Richardson okay. so that'll be Thanks an interesting guys. one so Easy Parker on Richo out. and Longview are going to Stafford, it's a top, tall Tiger forward line and as Jared forecasts, Thornton going to Brown Hi. the Rick interesting Hayden. one is Longmuir his role in defence on Greg Stafford. Stafford's a very important player, and he's giving a bit of uh, physical to Justin Longmuir, just throwing him around a bit. And young Meyer's got the job Go on Brown. You, Mark, please, Mark. Yeah, Mark's here. Come round behind So that's him, like a forward Mark. line. Simmons, Stafford, Richardson, Brown, and Cracker. The five of them leading out from the hot spot now. It is an impressive list. This is Brown, the target. He's got an early touch. It's a big challenge for a kid. Scott Thornton hasn't played a hell of a lot of footy and he's up against the bloke I regard as uh, clearly the best small forward in the game. Good start to the Tigers getting forward. Yeah, I'm not sure about Thornton. I don't like the way he uh, manned up on Brown then. He actually had his back to the ball. Let Brown uh, get far too much space. Early change for the Dockers with Johnson coming on as Fremantle assess the matchups. Brown's kick won't be a score. Look at those tall Tigers and Noble has plucked down an impressive grab. It was an impressive grab. He stood his ground. He threw up the big mitt Thanks, and dragged Just it in one-handed. Awesome display. There's been a lot of talk about Noble and also Stafford not uh, not giving the Tigers too much. So a great start for him to take a strong mark in the uh, Ford 50. Away yeah. from the camera, Richo and another in Brulio. And now Peter Bell and Tuck having a go at one another. Emergency umpire is occupying plenty of time on the ground right now. And Trent Noble... I reckon he's failed mathematics, but he's uh, con the umpire. He's pulled about 15 degree bonus for himself. And he should kick this goal. And he does. Tigers on the board first. They pump the Tigers and it's on in the middle. There's plenty of hurly burly. Terry Wallace has, uh, I reckon, clearly sent a message to his players. We want it tough, we want it close, we want it physical. Take it up to the Dockers. Surprise, surprise to see Josh Carr in there throwing his weight around. Well, he's the one you've got to get over if you're going to break the uh, Dockers spiritually because I think he is now taking on a major leadership role in the middle. A premiership player, an excellent player at that, a great leader. Picture perfect start for the Tigers. Noble and Sandilands. And we might get a second bounce. Pettiford charging through, held up. Here's Wayne Schwartz. It's a good thing Stephen Dodd took some happy snaps here a couple of days ago. He didn't last any more than 15 seconds. He came off. Michael Johnson straight on to Greg Stafford, which allows Justin Longmuir to play loose in defence. Just getting his bearings. Noble, the soccer off the ground. Open territory, centre-half forward. Richo, ball at a gate coming out. Parker does well under pressure. Farmer at the wrong end of the ground. Johnson's first kick in AFL football, a good one. Finds Hazelby, runner-up in the best and fairest last year, to Sandilands. 
poor kick going forward, Newman. Yeah, it's a terrible kick. First kick, everyone's a little bit toey still. Good to see Jeff Farmer getting an on-ball role, though. Let him get up the ground and get a few touches without the pressure of having to kick goals all day. Newman shorts it for Hyde. As we said, 29 touches last week. 23 of them were effective, and so is that one to Pettifer. A lot of people have been critical of Jeff Farmer. Chris Conley, on the other hand, has, uh, has said that he's quite happy with his form. Pettifer's kick made Kellaway wait. Infamous side, Anthony Grover in for the first time this year. Did not wait. Now Parker. Game's record holder at Fremantle. Kicking to midfield. And on a good lead, Murphy. Ryan Murphy, the 19-year-old out of Gippsland. Out wide for Johnson. Likely looking build of the lad. Going for Pavlich. And Ray Hall has the task on Matthew Pavlich. That's dangerous, Ray. It's 50. It is 50, and I've got to say, Matthew Pavlich worked incredibly hard for that. He led from about 30 metres out from goal. There were four consecutive leads, and finally it was on it on a half-field flank. Ray Hall has given away the 50, so for his efforts, Matthew Pavlich has come up with a, well, a, a shot at goal that you just expect him to kick. Yeah, before he actually got this ball, he had a 20 to 30 metre break on Hall. But they didn't use him the first time. He kept leading and got it uh, got it the second time. Is the umpire just slightly stingy in his 50? I think he's about 10 metres short. Looks 10. Over that on the ground is 220 metres. <laughs> Pavlich, six goals, four for the season. And he's missing this one, pushing it away to the far side. Well, I was down on the ground watching him warm up and he kicked I reckon eight straight oh risky attempt at the play on by Hyde Farmer doing well done, very Farmer. well and the end result will be the Tigers will emerge through Bowden hacks it away quickly towards the wing good hands here by Murphy kick perhaps letting him down Tucks had a good couple of weeks Noble the tall against the short there Jackson got it to Chaffee. He burst clear. Brown wants it in the goal square. Chaffee's kick intended for him. Doesn't reach him. McFarlane electing to go for the boundary line. Not a great deal of talk from the Docker defence. Not a great kick coming forward. I would have thought uh, there were better options. Matthew Richardson called it long in the goal square. Didn't, uh, didn't want to use him. Just didn't have the leap power. No blocks in front. On the burst. On that, you'd say Chaffee can kick it 40 metres. Forwards need to put that into the computer. Look at all these ruckmen the Tigers have up forward. Stafford for Richardson. Intended for Tuck. Parker. Good defensive work. And now they can look to run. Carr getting it on for Black. Black going wide. Pavlich. Too strong. Stay there, don't go forward. Kicking quickly. Space was for Longmuir. Farmer awaiting the crumbs. Newman spins into traffic. Webbs to put the body on. Tigers stand tall. Kellaway to Chaffee. Has the northern wing. Just waiting for his teammate to run into space. That's Tuck, and he's got it now. Penetrating kick inside the 50. Sandilands floating back. Brown waiting last in line. This is Thornton. Cracker with the tackle. Richardson. Boundary throwing. And a bit of interest. High tackle, free High kick. Tackle. Um, no, Luke, it's your free kick. Well, that squares that one up that uh, Thornton That's should have had because he got rid of the football and then was saying. Uh, What's Richo? Richo doesn't it's know it's not his free. Over the top. The, the tackle is fine. And he disagreed with Scott Jeffrey. <laughs> Luke, Takes a while having the umpire's mics back away. <laughs> yes. Uh, we won't comment on that. No. Play. We'll just let that pass to the keeper, Parker. Out for Bell. Peter Bell, the skipper averaging 21 possessions a game in the opening three rounds. Yeah. Jeff Farmer. He's working hard to nail in the piece. He's, uh, the body language, excellent. Yep. It is good. Except he's gone, he's gone too, too far. far here. And he's in the back, wins a free. Advantage play on. Doctors away. Medhurst, don't expect him to handball, even from the impossible angle. Noble takes the mark. Gasper going wide for Tippendale. He tried to do the right yeah. thing then, Medhurst, yeah, but uh, he should have had a shot. There were, all the numbers were for the Tigers at the top of the square. On that occasion, should have had a ping at them. Well, he's confused. Every other time, commentators are cooking him for uh, not having a shot. <laughs> now you've changed the rules. <laughs> if they're all Tigers at the top of the square, you've got to have a ping, Jared. You've yeah. had someone in the gun each week, Wayne. We'll wait oh. and see who's <laughs> in the gun this Sunday as Black goes very wide to the northern side. 
And it's over for a boundary throw in Wayne Swass. Your early impressions? Uh, Frio definitely breaking down after they get across uh, centre half forward. I agree with Wayne there. He had to have a shot because doing the right thing there just played into the Tigers' hands. Mark Collins being, uh, picking up Paul Hazelby. Did a terrific job last week on Adam Cooney. So whilst he's recovering from osteitis pubis, not a bad ploy by the Tigers just to give him a job, shutting, uh, shut down the important playmaker for the Dockers. Hyde doing well. Carrying the ball, Brown, look out, runner, get out of the way. That's the Tiger runner. You got to concentrate. Is that Barnsley out there? That's a free man of five, it's a free kick. And you hear the umpire lecturing the runner there. You've got to be concentrating. Got to give it to Pavlis. He's got nowhere to kick it. Josh Carr going now to, Pav uh, to Medhurst against Gasper. Mismatch your fancy if it hits the ground. There's Medhurst, as we know and love. Shit. And Webster will accept the pass. Go short to Cook, and he's got the mark 45 out. Well, you've got to tell you, uh, pay credit where it's due. I've been a critic of Paul Medhurst for Try his lack of thinking, for his lack of looking for the other option. And today he's had two opportunities to uh, fly at the goals. OK, maybe one he should have gone, but both times he was thinking <laughs> team. And there's... Uh, he had the notes in his hand. He was checking the notes. Nathan Brown getting up nice and close to his runner. Troy Cook to try and get Freeman out of the lead. Is a bit of a swirling breeze down there, Wayne Schwoss. Is it going to play much of a part? Well, I think uh, you're probably better off asking your esteemed colleague next to Jarrett there. He's the centre four, but I would have thought there it would have started at the left-hand post, pushing it to the right-hand side. They've got to take that into consideration. At the end of the day, these are goals that they must kick early on. Especially with the hole in the grandstand, uh, I'm sure the ball's going from left to right. The wind didn't affect that kick back into play. It was just an out-and-out -out shocker. Kellaway very close to the line. Into the shadow of the new grandstand, Tivendale. The Dockers have won just four of 19 matches at this ground, but three of their last four. Simmons, the former Fremantle player, kicked four last year when they beat Richmond here coming from behind. Brown finds an opening. He's a good finisher. Nathan Brown the goal. He may just well be the classiest player going around right now. Well, he's in the Richmond uh, side to kick goals. He didn't kick a lot of goals last year. Started this year with a few more. And uh, that was a terrific goal. He is certainly a class act. Wayne Swass in the boundary. Well, I just think that that highlights the missed opportunity by Troy Cook. The Tigers are able to bring the ball in, get it down the other end of the ground. And Nathan Brown, as we see often, makes them pay. All about taking chances. Dockers have not done that in the last two weeks and have lost both games. Richmond have and have won both. Fremantle, though, remembering one and two, but they've played the Premiers, the Premiership favourite, and the new Premiership favourite in their three matches. A much tougher start than the Tigers. Here's Bell giving it to Carr. Brother Matthew, a late withdrawal with a virus. One of three Dockers. Edwin and Polak, the other two, not taking their part. Cook, 50 Farmer, 35, should kick it, and Jeffrey delivers. He started well today. Well, just a good centre clearance, Wayne, and uh, once again, the body language on Jeff Farmer is good. He's, uh, the ball's running for him at the moment. He's working hard. He looks like he's got a clear mind. Definitely the prime movers for Fremantle. Peter Bell to Josh Carr into the forward line, and the Wizard, lovely finish. Well, we discovered we discussed uh, the midfield for the Tigers in the opener. Described it as blue collar. Well, right now they've got uh, one of the more white collar players in the game, and that is uh, Nathan Brown, right in the middle. Run straight, guys. Heels are in. Can't go the ball, guys. Play on. Tigers two goals. Fremantle one two. Simmons in traffic. Hurries a left foot kick forward, but gives the forwards a chance. Brown. Will kick his second goal. Okay. Not quite. Okay. Well, the pickup was superb, but in doing so, he just got himself slightly off balance. So, good tackle and chase and tackle there by the Dockers. Zoning up from this kickback into play, the Tigers. He's the one player that learns to me, Wayne, is the difference potentially between the two teams. He has just got to be locked down on. Yeah, good contest by Richardson. He, he... Oh, that's a dangerous kickback into play. And it's going to cost him. No, it's not. It's a poster from Coughlin. 
And gee, he had more time there than he probably realised. Sorry, Clinton. Uh, as I was saying, a good contest by Richardson before. Brown knows that it's going to come to the front every single time. He puts a strong attack on the footy. That's exactly what he did against Parker on that occasion. Black assuming the kick in duties now. Kicks to a contest. Richardson there over the top. Simmons, nice grab. Well, he'll be pretty pumped up playing against one of his uh, former clubs and the club he played his best footy at. He's had a quiet start to his new career with the Tigers. This is his better, best start so far this season. Go short for high. That's it, mate. Good work from Medhurst, pushing up from deep in the forward line to help out the defence. Stafford. Not quite. Johnson, the man against him there as Cook feeds the handball to McManus. The veteran docker going long. Target is Webster, crashing into Kellaway. Murphy following up. Bowden, good tackle. Near the boundary line, and it's over for a throw-in. Well, we saw Stafford get a break of about 10 metres and drop what was a relatively easy mark. And the reason why he got that 10-metre break was because Brown put a beautiful shepherd on. Umpires just clearing their throat. We've missed those mics the last couple yeah. of weeks. Sandalin's down to Cook for Bell. Look at that. In plenty of traffic, still finds an opening and gets it back from McManus. The little legs pumping furiously, reaches 50, kicks long, and Martin Graham is there to help it through for a behind. Really love to see uh, Matthew Pavlis drop back to full forward at times. You know, spend 50% of the quarter coming out of the full forward line and 50% working out the ground. It would conserve his energy and give them a bit more of a uh, mix-up down there. It can be a tough position, centre-half forward. It can often go over your head if, uh, if you're not in the game. And if you fall forward, you can lead onto the ball. Coughlin, the runner nearly getting involved again. Catch that. <laughs> Richo will try, but it's an easy one for McFarlane to batter into the front row. Right. Good on McFarlane. He's, uh, he's really helping out Shane Parker. That's twice now he's come over the top. As uh, we have a look at the rotations going on on the Fremantle bench. But Parker's pretty isolated now in the goal square up against the power man. Would have loved to have had Graham Pollack down there today with these Tiger Tools. Thornton quick hands, defers to Woods. Now McFarlane. Play on, no 15, play on! Play you heard the call. Shammer hemmed in on the boundary. It's in danger. Tigers working well here. <laughs> the docker, Longmuir had just got the hand in. Grover, Straight Walker, McFarlane, now they're away. Yes! Black, back for McFarlane. Having to go Come short for McManus. Pavlich back up. against Hall on the Fremantle 50. Now he leads. McManus, will he go in his direction? No, go shorter than that, Webster. Joel, that's it. That's Peter good. Bell seeing plenty of the football. Pavlich has made 10 leads there. He's going to be tied by, uh, by quarter time. He's made three or four leads and they haven't used him at all. Medhurst sends a bullet into Murphy. That was a nice pass. Yeah, it must be frustrating playing that uh, key post position these days with the want of the midfielders and defenders to basically take it wide before they come back into the middle. Ryan Murphy has kicked just one goal in his brief AFL career. Debuted round 16 of last year, played a couple of games and has played two games this year. Now it's his third match, the 12th pick of the 2003 National Draft. Very tight angle. And it's close, but missing to the near side. So just one behind. Fremantle have had some chances in the latter stages of this opening turn. That'll be Aaron. Thanks. Thank you. And there we see uh, Pavlich, who made three or four leads then. They chose to ignore him and, and go short. If you were Matthew Pavlich, would you let your teammates know about it now that, hey, have a look at me? Yes, in a nice way, Clinton. <laughs> Gasper. Yeah. Long ball. Well, I think it was towards Delidio, but there were two Dockers there, Grover and Woods, Great the former to the latter. Read it beautifully, Grover. He was uh, right on top of that kick before his man even knew it was coming. Sandalin sees it over for a boundary throwing. 2-2, two -two, playing 1-4. Nice signing. There's been a lot of talk about Sandalin's. Uh, the fact that he's the tallest player in the league, yet not winning too many hit outs. Wayne Schwoss. Man of very few words, Swatter. We'll get back to him. We might try again as Black sees it over for a boundary throw, and he's eagerly awaiting there on the boundary line. Swatter. 
Yes, look, they've just got to make the most of the opportunities. It's hard to hard to think or comprehend how Aaron Sanderlands has got probably got three or four inches on Troy Simmons. Going by what Wayne says, can't get his hands on the ball first. And he put on a bit more weight in the offseason, joining the former galloping gasometer as the heaviest men to play league footy. 124 kilograms as Newman goes wide for Hall, marking on the wing, a promising build-up. We await the lead from Richardson and Brown. Brown and Richo, they both lead to the southern side, and they're both turned down. Hall goes to Newman in the centre corridor. Now he can switch to the northern side. Simmons going long and straight to the hot spot. Brown at the top of the goal square. Off hands. <laughs> Behind. It was a creative attempt from Shane Tuck. A couple of Dockers just not working hard enough to pick up their men, and they put on the chases as that ball was being chipped across the midfield. If they had have uh, worked earlier, they wouldn't have had that option, Richmond, and maybe have extracted a turnover earlier. The margin five points as we approach time on of the opening term. Heath Black. A crucial match for the Dockers. Gee, a floating helicopter kick, but effective for McFarlane. Now Byron Shammer. Going to the southern wing, McManus and Newman. Newman the spoil. Hayes will be awaiting the crumbs. Coglin at ground level as well. Good pickup towards Delidio. Back for Coglin. Now Cracker. Too far out to score. Has Stafford wide or Richo long? He's got Richo. Well, this is a confusion and the great strength of Richmond at the moment. He did look as if he was going to Greg Stafford and uh, Sandlins didn't know which big man to cover. He was caught between Stafford and Richo and in the end, uh, Cracker feigned to go to Stafford and then just hooked it slightly to Richo. It was an excellent kick. Simple as one thing, Jim, uh, Jim Cracker. Andrew Cracker has a football brain. Isn't an athlete, he's a footballer. Richo's got his first. Tigers by 11 points. That kick of Andrew Cracker actually plays a lot like Jim Jarrett, but yep. that kick of Andrew Cracker is exactly what we've been talking about. It wasn't to the contest, it was to the space over the top, across skulls on the angle. Matthew Richardson, uncontested mark. And the big man power in the uh, forward line of Richmond just looks a little bit more there's, dangerous. There's than, a bit of potency there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, a lot more dangerous than what's happening up the other end of the ground. And, you know, they've got one of the best potential forwards in the business in Pavlich. They're not looking for him. Watch the heels, guys. Tigers by 11 points. Back in the centre. Noble and Sandilands. Jackson. Oh, did well. Yes! Got it to Tuck. Through the fingertips of Cracker. Simmons working with Brown and Cracker. Brown to Cracker. Hurries a snap at goal and missing everything. Still, they're working pretty well together, the Tigers. And uh, Terry Wallace would be thrilled with what he's seeing at the present time. I think the Dockers are working hard as well. They just haven't quite got the potency up forward at the moment. There's a good structure about this Richmond forward unit. Walker for Parker. Now they were trying to flood that southern side. You see a couple of players leading out there, but he'll affect the switch back now to Woods in the northern back pocket. Now McManus running hard to try and free up. Woods carries it. Three bounces. Four. Devoid of long options. Chipping wide for Medhurst and Gasper. And Medhurst can't keep it in. Classic case of Woods taking one too many bounces. The lead was on. Could have used McManus, but decided to take an extra bounce. McManus kept on running and has taken a rest with Farmer coming back on. Jaffe doing a pretty good job on Josh Carr at the moment. Just three touches to Carr. Coglin at ground level. Knock it out! We'll have a bounce. Come on, you're both holding it in. And Sanderlands is sitting. We may be able to pan back right in front of the uh, 50 in the forward the line for the Dockers. An extra big lamppost there. James, yes. Jeffrey and Grun, the men controlling the action this afternoon as Midhurst, okay. who's Darren, Darren. been thereabouts in this opening turn, elects to go quickly from just beyond the 50. And he's missing everything as well, out on the full. Well, they have created enough opportunities to be right there with the Tigers, the Dockers, in this turn, but they have just not converted the work up forward. Medhurst with 27 kicks this year. His next handball will be his first. Well done to Murdoch Sand. Effective yeah. spoil without giving away a free kick. Tigers win out with sheer weight of numbers. Noble running. 60 metres out. 
Simmons on the lead. Slipped through the hands, but got a push. Got a grab. He grabbed him, and they've been pretty hot on at the umpire. Some folks suggesting it's too easy for forwards. I reckon it's spot on. They're just paying the free kicks if they're there. You're not allowed to grab and retard a bloke in a marking contest. They look a lot more potent with Simmons on fire, as he's shown already today. He's, uh, he's on his game. Troy, that's your line. Mark's here. Troy Simmons, three senior years at Melbourne, three years at the Dockers, and now in a Tiger jumper. Kicked 35 goals for Fremantle last year, including four in this match at this ground, where Fremantle came from 39 points behind to win after a scoreless opening term. Simmons pushing that one away for a behind. A disappointing miss. For Coglin, Hazelby uh, matchup, Jared is an interesting one. Coglin already seven possessions, Hazelby three. Mm -hmm. Both good young midfielders, both emanating from Western Australia. With football brains. Yes, very good. You seem to be making a point about football brains, one. I just think uh, I just think clubs are recruiting athletes rather than uh, footballers, and that's why they make wrong decisions. Best football brain you played with? Played with? Yeah, as a teammate. Oh, I can't go past Wayne Schwoss down on the boundary. <laughs> that's a nice answer. Ah, oh dear. A mutual admiration society every Sunday on your TV screen. Gee, that's Drivers a kick. kick. Yep, Simmons. Just couldn't quite get it to Delidio. Parker to mop up. Grover might go a little longer this time. Carries it himself. Is he going to get away from the lunging Campbell? He's turned it over again. Noble for Richardson. Keeps it low. Target Delidio. Hyde. Back for Delidio. Brown's dangerous. Brown's Chaffee. looking awfully dangerous. He's waiting for it. He's saying, give it to me. Nearly ran into Richo. Richo's kick smothered. Now the Dockers are away. Farmer for Murphy. Kick towards Pavlich. Hall does well. Very well, in fact. But you've got to get over Sandilands here. Coglin affects the spoil. That was good. Delidio finds an opening. Watch the bounce here. Watch the bounce. Watch the bounce. Strike. First goal in senior footy. Kicked by Brett Delidio. And it was an unlikely one. Stephen Dodd, meanwhile, we spoke about him pre-game, first trip to the MCG. And an injury coming up, perhaps, as we have a look at how Delidio bounced this one through. And you'd have to say that's Coughlin's goal. Make, make the spoil on Sanderlands, who's uh, two or three foot taller than him. That's exactly what you ask of your forwards, to put pressure on and bring it to ground. And you wouldn't. You would not believe this, his first visit to the MCG, and this young man has got a serious knee injury. He got his knee trapped underneath a Tiger player. He wasn't able to move, and I think there is some significant damage. Let's hope that uh, a bit like Brian Harris of the Western mm. Bulldogs, it's not as bad as we first thought, but the replay won't be good. Uh, cousin of the former Fremantle player, Brad Dodd, he was elevated off the rookie list mentioned at the start 21 years of age out of the sharks of east from Adel, just his sixth senior game and a terrible sight anytime a player carried off on a stretcher let's have another look just getting that left knee buckled under peter bell yeah. we won't jump to conclusions no didn't look as bad as potential as some we've seen but you just yeah. never know with uh, the variations in the human body how much damage could be done there speaking to chris connolly yesterday uh, about this young fellow so excited that he was uh, back at the mcg it was uh, this is a shame just want to make a point here to young people watching when the ball is spinning as hard as this always on the second bounce yeah. it makes that big jump so if you're a defender or in fact a forward and you see it spinning 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 quickly wait for the second bounce and then do the bolt the back bolt spot on jared if he pushes you in it's a free kick vice versa and if someone tells me that the lydia meant that right, then i'm going to raise right. a question mark it well, was happy birthday coming. brett he turns 18 tomorrow oh, good tap. Thanks, mate. he might be able to celebrate with a beer then hazelby with the clearance just on Hazelby Wayne, have a think about uh, him. He's been 
well handled at the moment. I reckon he's a good forward. Full forward, small full forward. Very strong overhead. You could get Coglin out of the centre. You could hit down there. That's it, Jeff! Jeff! Now, another goal late in this first term for the Tigers, and the Dockers would be in a serious predicament. Coglin has Richardson leading. <laughs> well, Richard. He just wanted to turn the mundane into the spectacular. He does that deliberately. That. Yep. He does it on purpose. Oh, the kick, though. Well, it wasn't pretty, but Shammer Bob the goodies, opens the door for Cracker. And he can't make them play. The Tigers have had a couple of extra chances here. Yeah, Byron Shammer, just a bit toey. He was just, he, he had it spent before he was off. They've just got to settle for you. They don't just feel, they're just playing as if they're under siege. And uh, they're still well and truly in this match. And just need a goal before quarter time. Tigers have been happy to concede that short kick in wide. Woods to Parker. Backed himself to beat Chaffee. Shammer. Woods again. Gee, where's he going there? Tigers will get there first. Well read by Coglin. Going short for Brown. And the Tigers have got so many options up forward, although Brown carrying it too far. Tivendale caught, it. holding the ball. Good pressure, overuse of the footy. Brown should have kicked. Yep. They need to look short. Coglin, nine touches. Brown, seven for Richmond. Parker, seven for the Dockers coming out of the back line as McManus gets pushed in the back. Advantage play on. Shannon Gosun kicking inside the 50. Tigers doubling back Graham, a former Hawk. Going for Tivendale, it's a nice kick. So you just move it quick, you've got three Tigers everywhere. They're running wide. Campbell. Ew. Good coverage, the man on the mark, Farmer, well done. Well, all that has done is allowed Fremantle to get most of their side back, but Brown has got himself free. 55 out, kicking to the pocket, Richardson to take it on the bounce. Parker against him, who will keep their feet? They both do, boundary throwing. See, they really are missing Polak and uh, Matthew Carr. A couple of other big bodies down there and a bit more experience through the middle would have... Uh... Three of the worst players they could have lost yeah. coming into this match. Carr, Polak and Headley. Bringing it in so slow allowed Woods and Sanderlands to get back and block up Richardson's space. Still at the back. Still dangerous here with 40-odd seconds remaining in the quarter. Bell. Woods, they want the boundary line. Gee, wish. He's disguised it well enough. So the Tigers by 19 points. Sign again, lads. Straight and out. the Dockers down a man with the injury to Stephen Dodd. The virus going through the club as well on the eve of this match. Shammer with quick hands for Peter Bell. Lee. Precise kick for McManus. Now, have the Dockers got time? Hang on, thanks, Sean. Touch back there, and he's walked out of bounds. It was, it was tough. Touch back there. No, I didn't call it tough. Quality player, Shammer. He's an Adelaide boy. His hero was Mark Prosciutto. There is talk that uh, he may want to go back to South Australia at some stage, but uh, stuck with the Dockers. He's a good player, you're right, and they won't want to let him go. Coming back from injury. Yeah. Will not want to let him go. They've got a free man. Inside of 20 seconds to the northern wing, McManus with the kick, and Noble having a good opening turn. Well, if they kick it long to packs when the ball's stationary, they're going to be outnumbered. They've only got one big giant. Richmond's got three. Have they got time to mark this kick? There will be time to mark it. Simmons! There's one of them. Can kick after the siren against his former club. They have looked a lot better side with Simmons and Noble playing well. Yep. Even though they had a good win last week against the Bulldogs, it was all Matthew Richardson taking marks. When you've got Noble around the ground uh, catching the ball and also Simmons in the forward line, they look like a very, very good side. It's a big kick this, isn't it? If he gets it, 25 points in front, more than a handy position. Yeah, very good. And they've also got Greg Stafford, who's probably the best kick of the lot of them, who's uh, started on the ground and he's resting up. Troy Simmons to deliver an early blow to his old club after the siren from just outside the 50. What a wonderful kick. And shades of Geelong and Brad Ottens from round one against Richmond. Have a look at that support for Troy Simmons. The goal after the siren 
and Richmond lead by 25 points at quarter time. As a former teammate of yours, Wayne, David King, just having a chat to a coach, Terry Wallace, who'd be thrilled with that opening quarter. 5-5 plays 1-4 at the MCG. We hope you're enjoying this fully interactive replay on Fox Footy Channel. Coming up after the game, join... ...to get over Sandal and Tink. Coughlin affects the spoil. That was good. Delidio finds an opening. Watch the bounce here. Watch the bounce. Watch the bounce. Strike. Well, you know what they say about the bounce of the ball going the Tigers' way in the opening term. 5-5-35 to the Dockers. 1-4-10 at quarter time. All single goal kickers on the ground. Coglin with nine touches. Brown, eight for the Tigers. And good users of the ball there. Bell, seven. And Parker, seven for the Fremantle Dockers trailing by 25 points. Two other matches being played on this Sunday of round four in the AFL. The Swans hosting Adelaide at the SCG. While St Kilda playing Melbourne at the Telstra Dome. If you want to catch the replay of those matches a little later on and treat them as live, look away now. Jared and Wayne, you know Chris Connolly well. Does he have the artillery to throw the whiteboard around? Will he do so? What's his chief concerns? I think he has to. I think uh, they've got to go through Math Matthew Pavlich a little bit more. He's found himself in some space. They've decided to go short through the midfield rather than direct, and it's uh, a criticism of mine that uh, sides just don't go direct enough. We see, uh, we see today with Simmons and Richardson, Noble in form in the ruck, getting it in there quickly. They've got the score on the board. When you've got a player of the uh, quality of Matthew Pavlich, you've got to use him when he's, uh, when he's free. Yeah, I think you're right, and I think that uh, it's tough for Chris Connolly today because he has been hamstrung with a lack of uh, players of significant height. And if Richmond play all of their tall forwards uh, and get the ball in quickly, it's going to be really tough for them. He may be forced to put Pavlitz back into defence and just go super small on the forward line. Wayne Schwass, tell us about the injured Stephen Dodd. Well, let me start by saying it was as though I was, I was extracting someone's molar out there. I was struggling to get information, but I'm pleased to say, I can say that, that Stephen Dodd has pinched a cartilage in all likelihood. They're currently doing some more tests to assess that, but that's the official word from the head physio at the moment. Good news at that. If uh, it's just a pinch cartilage, it didn't look as if it twisted too much more than uh, for significant damage, but disappointing for him in his uh, debut here. Straight up, guys. Start of the second term. Which Tigers heading to the famed Punt Road in with a 25-point oh, no, lead. Go, Longmuir unable to get the clearance and tied up is Josh Carr, who had an eventful day yesterday at the team hotel. A fire broke out in the kitchen. Fire engine called for. The girls were running around everywhere. Josh Carr bravely storms in, puts the fire out himself. Fire engines deemed redundant. Well, Justin Lungmuir has gone into the ruck and uh, he's won two battles against Trent Noble. This time he's come up with a free kick. It will go back. Pavlich deep. He's starting in the goal square. And now Thornton about to run past him to try and get Nathan Brown run. Had to use Thornton then. He's made the running. He did, didn't he? A hundred or so metres. He dashed. And got free. Kellaway. Giving it on. Newman putting Graham under the pump. Ditto to Coughlin. Now Kellaway and Hall. Still not out of the woods, the Tigers. Backing himself. Tivendale. Got it to Campbell. Risky kick to midfield. The bounce awkward for McFarlane. Perhaps had to get it on the full. Longmuir towards Bell, but chopping it off Noble. And he's going to go long and direct, although the Dockers have got the loose man, McFarlane, back there. He covered territory well. <laughs> Richo, not happy. And that's not the first time Richo and not happy have been used well, in the same time. You can't blame Richo. I mean, he ran to the side and mm. Noble's, Noble's kicked, kicked it down the middle. middle. Well, you just got to look. No blocks, no he's blocks. great to watch. Wait for the call. <laughs> Whether he's getting the ball or not. Yep. You're, you're just happy he gave you a plug in his column in the age. Here's Bell going to the midfield. Black. Good start here by the Dockers. They must convert. Not wide, Midhurst. Gasper's been alongside of him for the duration of the match so far. Good pick up to Lydio. Now Graham for Cracker. 
It's that kick that kills the forward. It's that extra one wide that absolutely kills the forward. If it doesn't hit the person, then it's just a dud kick. Long wide lead. Simmons picks it up on the half volley. Can go back to Cracker. Does so by hand. Polly Farmer-like handball there. Now Cracker driving it, although Docker's loose men back in an easy one again. This time Longmuir. Brother debuting for Carlton. Last night at Amy Stadium in the draw with Port. Now Bell. McFarlane. Wide ball from Carr for Grover at full stretch. Cracker closing fast. Doing well? No, in the back. Unlucky there, Andrew Cracker, but uh, as we can see, they keep chipping the ball around through the midfield, going across the ground rather than uh, straight up and down the ground. Case in point right here. Got Justin Longview in the middle. Black wide for Bell. Gee, making hard work of it. Like the water polo dockers of old. Grove along to full forward. That's better. Has it given them a chance for something? Not quite. Coglin emerges. And now the Tigers can go. Noble for Graham. Out wide, Chaffee. Good hands. Josh! Let him get up. Let him go back, mate. Let him go. Did well there, Josh Carr. He went within an inch of getting 50 metres, but he did enough. They had the numbers, the Tigers. If he didn't do that, yep. they would have uh, run the ball down the ground. Campbell. That's it, Josh. Thank you. Final season of AFL footy starting on the bench today. The 32 year old. There's a free kick. No job. No really Sean Marks here. Took his arm, just chopped his arms. Right. Thanks, mate. <laughs> and Sean McManus acknowledging the free kick. A little bit different to Matthew Richardson earlier in the game. <laughs> he acknowledged it, just didn't agree with it. <laughs> yes. Bell gets the hand pass away to Woods. Longmuir. Not a good kick. Delidio. Impressive touches today for Brett Delidio. Some ugly signs here for Freo. They're going to have to lift. Richo lifts. Can't hang on to the footy. Parker. Now they can affect the switch. Black. Straight hands. Thornton. Good kick. Webster. One of the late call ups. Now, he had Murphy out wide, turned him down, and then kicks to a Tiger in high. If you heard a thump in the background, it was Jared hitting the desk. Brown, out wide, Campbell. Tiger's using it well today. Cracker. I'm going to see my lawyer over that comment, Clinton. Coglin, 45 out. Missing to the near side. Chris Connolly said yesterday that he believes footballers of today don't mature until they're 25, purely because of the reason uh, they don't make the right decisions. They've got to play a bit of football. And uh, in Fremantle's case, I hope uh, they get to 25 sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I think Robert Murphy would agree as well. Because he was sitting on his own whilst his teammate just uh, sat there and tried to sum up the options. Here's Thornton charging through the middle, just a little bit too quick for himself. Tuck. And I think that's why the long game plan actually is the most beneficial. Because if in doubt, you've got one thing in your mind. And I know it's I know it's an antiquated system and people will flood back, but you've got to have a get out of car, get out of jail car. And if you're running forward, cons always considering three or four options. The forwards don't know where you're going, and if you're a young player, it makes it uh, too, com too confused in the brain. Gasper was terrific then, really charged at the football, where his opponent hesitated. Brown, on the lead to the pocket, Simmons dives, can't hang on. Now McFarlane for Bell. Out wide, Black. The Dockers with just one goal in 39 minutes of football now. Medhurst. Going towards Ryan Murphy in the middle. He's trying to let go now. Ryan That's Murphy, it, exactly. Right. No, he hasn't got Slipping. Oh, good heavens. Just got to be aware of the players that if they're in that uh, centre wicket area, it is a bit slippery. Bowden hung onto it long enough to free up Tuck. Out wide, Richardson. Too far out to score here. 
but drives it long. He likes it long, so he gives Stafford and Simmons a chance. Good spoil there by the first game of Johnson. It's a ripper spoil. Carr giving it back for Longmuir. Docker defence standing tall there. Now Bell for Black. This is where they're breaking down. I'd like to look at the Richmond uh, setup though. That long kick from Richo in to Stafford and Simmons. It's dangerous. Kellaway. Corralled in on the boundary. Sending it to half back. Oh, clever knock on. Richardson getting it for Gasper. Richo sucking in some breath behind play, just sitting down, enjoying the sunshine. As Hyde delivers to Cracker. Brown. Yeah, Brown, he wants it, doesn't oh, he? Oh, he was there. He's darting this way, that away is Nathan Brown, the acting skipper. I think Andrew's going back for the barrel. He's oh, going to he, kick it from he 60. Couldn't kick this, sure. Have a crack at it. He'll pop it up into the pocket. Dockers with two on one. Easy one from Longmuir. Now Black getting plenty of touches down here. Going to start to do some damage. This is his 12th possession. Chipping it for Bell. They're waxing it. This will be his 14th. Eventually. Event goal, oh, maybe not. Good heavens, where are they going? Hazelby. Thornton. He was in doubt, so he kicked it long. Big leap by Webster. Tigers waiting down. Tivendale for Hall. Well, what can you say? Uh, even the Richmond supporters are booing when Fremantle have got the ball. They, they just keep going sideways. It's very unusual. I'm dizzy. That's the early start to the Oz kick game with the goalposts <laughs> on the wings. Pavlis, go long. Car. Well, sure. For Cook now. No, 50. Yeah, he's got 50. No, 50. No, 50. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Scott Jeffrey, really right on it. Nah. It's very interesting in uh, with today's football. There are only very Justin. few players, while they have the ball, that can change their mind um, from one thing to another, Jared. We're Benzo talking on. about uh, th there Benzo are certain the players that can do that. Most can't. Well, on that analogy, my wife would be an outstanding footballer. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she's not watching this afternoon. Cook from 50. Missing to the near side. The Dockers with their first score of the second quarter. We are 10 minutes in. Just gets back to what you were saying. If you take decision making out of their uh, out of the equation, out of the equation, then uh, they won't make as many mistakes. Oh, impressive leap! Coughlin can't hang on. We were talking last week, Wayne. We don't like robots. Kellaway for Campbell. No, we don't. Programmed to do one thing. This is a good build-up. Coglin charging through the midfield, driving long. Cracker lurking, but Parker did well to keep his feet. Here's Black again. Now he's got Murphy in space. He'll go down the line. Hazelby, and this will be the best Docker set-up of the quarter. Hazelby closes to 55, drives it long. Wonderful goal. Long direct football by the Dockers. Paul Hazelby finishes the job with a good running goal. And really, that was started by a poor kick from Coglin. Didn't kick it to the space, kicked it to a contest. For the first time in a long while, Fremantle using the corridor, or what looked like the corridor, and they've kicked the goal. We were here last year, Clinton. I think it was uh, last year, might have been the year before, where the Dockers uh, were in a hopeless position. They came back from some 32 points down. 39 down to Richmond in this game last year. Last got back to win with the big final term. 19 points the margin Ready, on a low scoring afternoon. Fremantle have been struggling for goals over the last fortnight. There's a free kick for Shepparton going Fremantle's way. He's Is this impact. the momentum swing? Yeah, he's had an impact, Justin Longmuir. He's, uh, he has allowed them to use their bigger blokes differently, but he's won some footy out of the middle. We've got Joel on. Bowden, who's uh, got that 40-foot leg rope you spoke about, Wayne. He's on. McManus to Pavlich with two to beat. Hall, I reckon that could have been a mark. He seemed like he had the first knock, but he's quick to get it on to Cracker. McManus will take the mark here on the wing. And finally, they go long when it's a two-on-one against Pavlich. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew's thinking, boys, your options to me aren't the best. Josh Carr now. The former power 
Premiership player going wide. The bounce will be important here, and it didn't favour Graham. Murphy with a very high kick to sit a half forward. And a free kick going the Tiger way. Stafford. Straight to him, Jack. Yes, Staff to Greg. Yours! Newman for Cracker. Athletically just knocking it down. Tigers with numbers. Carr should keep it in if he can. And in the end, a good result for the Dockers a bounce. Well, we have been uh, Thanks, critical, not directly, but probably on, indirectly of the Dockers so far. But I think you've got to pay credit to their work rate in this first 10 minutes of the second half. They've locked it up. They haven't been blown out of the water as it looked uh, like was going to happen. They've just got to keep, keep contesting and hope that they can uh, manufacture goals. Bye. Yes, Jared, I tend to agree. They are, uh, they've, they've closed the game down and yeah. they've stopped Richmond Straight kicking goals. In. They just haven't kicked too many of them themselves. Tick under nine minutes remaining from half time. Shammer tied up. McManus throws it out. No, high tackle. Docker for it. Hey, Steph, just keep him down, mate. Back to my line. Not the first Fine. time Steph had heard coming. that. McManus. Now Longmuir. This kid's all right. He runs a lot. Now he yeah. can go all the way to the goal square. Or we'll find Murphy. He's going to go to Murphy this time. His ears ringing after the last exchange. And Murphy with the mark. And this could be two in a row for the Dockers. And they'll be right back in it. Now that's the second time Fortin's run off Brown. The first time he wasn't used, that time he was. But so important when a guy like Thornton, he's only a young guy, he's playing on a, a superstar of the competition yeah. in Brown, it's so important that you do use him, you give him confidence, give him confidence to run down the ground, and as you see there, he's obviously a good user of the ball. Yeah. Ryan Murphy, from inside the 50, no worries with the distance, the accuracy, good as well. Murphy's got his first, Dockers back in it. And not only that, they're getting to get on top in the last six or seven minutes. Well, I think they've just dominated that midfield battle. Their pressure skills have gone up through the roof. And they've found a couple of targets inside the forward 50. And this kid, he looks a beauty. I'm not sure he's running off Browning on that occasion, Wayne, but uh, he has on many occasions Brown in the centre. But he's a driving runner, and he runs straight, and he runs direct. And the finish was perfect. He definitely was running off Brownie. He? He's at full back at the moment. And to have the, the courage and the nerve to do that against a superstar Brown. like Brown. Although Brown's in the middle. And caught by Shammer. <laughs> we'll see whether or not Thornton goes to him now or not, Wayne. Here's Tevin Duck. Yours! Deep kick to full forward. Richardson, was he being held? No. Tuck wrestling with Thornton. Here's Brown for Campbell. Not the best option for Hyde, but just had to get rid of it. Ooh, close to a free kick. Yep. And listen to the Tiger Army. Well, Not happy. Within, well, they're within 10 metres now anyway, Thornton and Brown. <laughs> You'll have a GPS on them, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Stafford having swapped jumper numbers to Cracker, to Chaffee, to Brown. Wants to swing on the left. Ditto for Hyde. He does so, but blazing away, and Heath Black is having a feast in the second turn. We've got Josh Carr forward, going wide again, the normal uh, outlet. The Wizards free in centre wing. And he's got it. He'll go to Pavlich, leading half. Kick makes him work, boundary throw in on the 50. Tigers with just one behind in this second quarter. Jared, you called it early, put Hazelby to full forward, and uh, they've made that move. Chris Connolly's made the move, and Coughlin has gone with him. Yeah, and I think that's a good one, because it drags Coughlin out of the middle. So, Coughlin was on top of that duel, and they're missing his run. Some danger there in the forward line, therefore, with Medhurst, Pavlich, and Hazelby close to the Docker goal. That's in the back against Hazelby. Advantage is paid as Brown careers away from half-back and goes to Campbell. Tivendale now can run. He likes carrying and kicking long. The lead's coming from everywhere. Oh. He elects to handball to Pettifer. 
He's looking for the one-two, I think. Circumspect option, that's for sure. Pettifer finds an opening. He's been a straight shooter this year. And that trend continues. Six straight for Kane Pettifer in 2005. Well, great goal by Pettifer. Matthew Richardson in the goal square once again. Not too happy. That one that really nearly mucked that up, Rich, Rich, uh, Richmond. Sorry, uh, one too many handballs. Should have gone long and direct, I thought, to Richardson in the goal square, but they got away with it. El Pettifer had the, uh, sorry, uh, there was an opportunity to go long prior to that handball to Pettifer, but it wasn't uh, taken by Greg Tivendale. They got the goal result anyway. Tigers back to a 19-point lead as Cracker gets the centre clearance for them. Tumbles it inside 50. Woods with the shining red boots waiting back there. Going out wide to Walker. Running. Kicking long. Murphy the target. Bowden filling the gap. Well, they're able to have Bowden at uh, loose across the half-back line, the Tigers, because the Dockers have also got a loose man across their half-back line. Hyde going for Cracker on the Play wing. On. Play, on. Play on the court. Here's Jackson. Heath Black, as I mentioned, running hot this quarter. Brown with McFarlane now, who fists it to a couple of trainers. Enjoying the action. Well, we spoke about uh, Fremantle were going to get back into this game. Pavlich had to have a big influence. He just looks a little bit one-dimensional to me. He's leading, 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 all under the ball. Mm. Andrew Rains yet to come on today for the Tigers. On the bench is Jackson on the run from the boundary line. 45 out. Richo, you hear the crowd chanting for a free. And, and it's going to Fremantle. Parker going quickly. Farmer for Webster. One out. Push. Bowden against him. The youngster did well. Farmer, good vision. McManus can run. Dockers lifting. Kick to Pavlich and coming out Johnson, the first gamer. Nice gas. Mark's back here. Running like Michael Johnson. Good passage of play by Freeman. I've got the free kick and quickly That's moved the ball in. That's it. Jeff Farmer That's working it. particularly hard. And I like the look of Webster. Wayne, I've watched him for a couple of years now and he is an improving player. Yes, he looks like uh, he looks like he's fitted into the forward line quite nicely, but. I would put Pavlich alongside Hayes will be at full forward, Jared. You said that earlier. First game up, third kick, first goal. Impressive stuff. He didn't even look like passing off that ball, Michael Johnson. And if the kid can kick like that, why not? Well, good signs there because the Dockers all of a sudden have got a little bit of belief. And for the first time for their club, there's been a bit of... Uh, Bonding after a goal, Wayne. Yes, well, uh, Kidney's first game, first kick, goal. He'll go into the record books with the, uh, the other 500 or so that have done that. Margin 13 points. 6-6 six, six to 4-5. Low scoring arm wrestle. Shepard, uh, Shepherd, a tiger free. Yes, he goes into that exclusive club, Wayne. <laughs> that uh, got a goal with his first, third kick in third league football. Oh, third kick, was yeah. it? Bowden for Cracker on the run. 50 out. Well, essentially passing it there to Brown, not kicking through it. And Thornton right alongside of Brown, forcing it through for a behind. I bet he wishes his first two had it for, yep. gone through the big sticks. Heath Black. And that was dangerous as Tuck knocked it down well. Under some pressure. High ball bout into Brown. And we know he can kick it from here. Even though the angle is fairly acute. Two metres. Get two metres. We'll set shots have cost him over the uh, last couple of years, particularly two years ago when he really struggled for the Western Bulldogs, had a bit of a bad run. That's good. But he was back playing, uh, play Just kicking it pretty well last season and this one's not an overly difficult one for Nathan Brown. He'll open it up as you see and miss everything. 
He's kicked 10 4 this year and now one out of bounds as well. Fair was. When you see a player step to his left and then kick the ball, he's not running in, in a direct line towards goal. You're always going to struggle to kick the ball straight when you do that. He just tried to guide it through as well, didn't he? Anyway, it's a good effort by the Dockers because uh, that one would have just opened up the lead again. Mm. Again, a late goal either way could be extremely important here for the morale in the respective camps heading to half time as Black going long. Hazelby the sit. The fly, but no Mark Newman. Gee, good tackle, Farmer. Newman did well, though. Gasper wide for Jackson. Boundary throwing will, res will result. And Matthew Pavlich just questioning why the kick wasn't delivered to him. You could, you could argue we could hold his leads back a little bit, but he just is getting completely ignored. He's a little out of sorts. He, he, to me, he seems like he's leading under the ball. On that occasion, he could have been used. I agree, Jared, but he seems a little out of sorts. Noble and Sandilands. This is Hyde being met solidly by McManus. He gets the hand pass out for Carr. Sandilands. Quick hands. Shammer working with Black. And now Woods. Dancing to an opening and going long. Pavlich or Johnson against three Tigers and Kellaway will win a free kick. Bad luck to the dog. It's just a bit of an errant spoil from the young kid. Thanks, Wiz. Had the right idea, though. Bring the ball to the front. Matt, go two metres. Yeah, that's it there. Thank you, mate. Jump out, Wiz. Wiz. Two minutes remaining Wiz, before half time. This is a dangerous setup. They've got the big bloke loose. Tuck going long. Simmons the target. Good hands. He's too far out. Lead is on of Richardson. Oh, what a pass from Troy Simmons. And this could be pivotal on the stroke of half time. Wayne, for the first time this year, I've seen Richmond set up with a forward line with positions. Centre half forward, full forward, forward pocket. All big blokes. And they are playing to their structure pretty well. Richo wasting no time with his approach, kick, and goal. Richo's got his second. The Tigers' lead is 20 points. Well, it makes a big difference, Jared, when Simmons is actually marking the ball. Over the last couple of weeks, he has struggled a little bit. There's been a lot of talk about... Uh, himself and also Stafford not marking the ball in the forward 50 all of a sudden today he starts taking his catches they look a lot better side now I just think it uh, it just is great that they're playing a structure structured forward line because it's given their forwards you saw them uh, running off the half back line it just went bang 60 meters to Simmons the Tigers have a 20 point lead black Minute remaining. Dockers need one after they dominated the middle period of this quarter. Going in hard and forcing a bounce on the northern wing. That's the way, boys. Tigers will be very happy with this position after Fremantle pressed hard. Free kick, some holding. And to Docker free. Should be advantage play on. And a big chance for Carr going for Medhurst or Johnson. Gasper did well. He's having a terrific afternoon. Kellaway for Newman. Downfield free. It went against Midhurst. What you doing for? Silly. You're giving away a cheap one. Thanks, Ramsey. You heard the call from Scott Jeffrey to Paul Midhurst. Tigers still with time. Although Reigns recently on the ground goes very wide for Simmons. Simmons playing a kick behind the play now. Back. Late in the quarter. Back for Reigns. Still time. Kellaway. Now Hyde. Still time. Need a mark. All Dockers back there. Although Webster unable to hang on. Richardson can't control it and the siren will beat them. Short second term of just over 26 minutes duration. Because Richmond with two goals. The Dockers with three at half time. That's our scoreline. Well, a good fight back from Fremantle, I thought. Uh, they got back into the game, like you said, during the quarter, Jared. They closed the game down, managed to kick, kick a couple of goals themselves. And really, they're right in this game at half-time. They are. They've got to find a, a role. 
and the ability to get the ball into Pavlich's hands because he is the one who can kick a bag, a bag of goals in the half. Richmond searching for three consecutive victories. The Dockers trying to avoid losing three in a row. They trail by 20 points at halftime. way to kickstart a career Michael Johnson his debut match on the MCG and a goal in the second term but the Dockers still trail by 20 points at halftime 7-7-49 the Tigers lead Richmond 4-5-29 Matthew Richardson the only multiple goal kicker on the ground Nathan Brown with 16 touches Coglin 15 and Hyde 13 for the Tigers while for the Fremantle Dockers 17 to Heath Black 14 to Peter Bell on the overall disposal front the Tigers with 27 more possessions, 10 of them contested, 18 of them uncontested. 10 more marks for Richmond, aside from that relatively even, except for the inside 50s. 34 entries inside 50 for the Tigers to the Dockers, 24. Hope you're enjoying it with us around Australia. Clinton, Wayne and Jared with you this afternoon. Wayne, your thoughts to halftime. Dockers 20 points down. How concerned is Chris Connolly? Look, I think he, uh, he'd be a little concerned. I thought uh, during that quarter they, uh, they went indirect. They mucked around with the ball through the midfield. They went across the ground rather than down the ground. Mm. I think he'd be concerned about that. But the positive for them is they did get back into the game. They're only 20 points down at half time. And I think there were a couple of positive signs uh, late in the quarter. As we have a look through all of the 22 players for the Tiger statistics and have a look at Nathan Brown. Kickstart things with a goal. What about the thoughts of Terry Wallace, Jared? I think he'd be uh, frustrated. I think, like us, he knew that there was a chance that, that they could have blown this game apart in that second term. And if they had have continued to win enough football through the middle of the ground and get it in and expose Fremantle's lack of height, then uh, I reckon this game was all but over at half time. But uh, he would know that Freo have worked really hard, and there was that Delidio goal, the double bouncer. Um, but they, in the end, they just didn't use the likes of Simmons, Stafford, Noble and Richo uh, well enough because the Fremantle Dockers midfield got on top, got plenty of the football. And whilst they were frustratingly indirect, uh, and it's led to Pavlich having just two possessions in a half, it did block up the flow of Richmond. And I suppose that's the best thing for Chris Connolly. He's gone in with a chance at halftime. At quarter time, it looked as if the game was going to be over. And, Jared, you called it during that second quarter with... with uh Coglin on Hazelby, sending Hazelby forward, taking Coglin out of the midfield. I thought that was a good move, uh, move by Chris Connolly uh, to do so. Yeah, I think uh, Hazelby is a terrific forward. We've seen him take plenty of marks, but I think it'd be great if they could get Pavlich deep. At the moment, they're using the uh, young man in Michael Johnson, who looks a terrific talent. But it's, uh, they've got to get Pavlich in. He is playing. He's playing a game that is just predictable at the present time, and being able to be locked down by Bowden and his direct opponent in Razor Hall. Here's some of the best from the Fremantle Dockers in the first half. Jeff Farmer getting their scoring underway 12 minutes into the opening term. Wayne Schwass, your impressions of the Dockers across the opening half. We'll get down to Wayne Schwass in a moment. I think Justin Longmuir was the other one, Wayne. Him going into the middle uh, allowed them to rotate the big man, Aaron Sanderlands. He actually uh, dropped back a number of times and uh, helped out their defence. They just have to find some extra height down there. Like the look of this kid, uh, he went back and kicked a pretty nice goal late in the term. And uh, he's another one of these young Dockers with plenty of future. And uh, Jeff Farmer, well, I reckon Jeff Farmer's uh, had a fair crack today. He hasn't got a, no a heap of the football, but his work rate and his body language has been superb. And here is young Michael Johnson with his third kick in AFL football straight through the middle on the acutest of angles. I'm glad you said that, Jared, with his third kick, uh, by the way. But, look, uh, I think you're right. Sanderlands has been a lot said about him. He's not getting his hands to the ball. He's the mm. tallest and heaviest footballer in the league. He just doesn't seem to get his hands to it. And for a big guy, I think he's got to do more around the ground for the Fremantle Dockers. Can he play full forward? Look, I don't think his mobility uh, will allow him to play full mm. forward. You can, you can definitely sit him up there. And if it's going to straighten the Dockers up, put him at full forward. We'll take a break from the MCG, come back and talk more about it. Half time, 7 7 to 4 5. Tigers leading by 20 points. Back in a moment.
Cricket Sunday afternoon at the football, 7 7 to 4 5. Tigers by 20 points at half time. It was interesting, Wayne. I heard Jerry just say that's a shocking decision, umpire. <laughs> looked out there to see what's going on. It's an Oz kick match involving some five and six year olds. Well, out all there. the kids were yeah. huddled around the ball at full, at, uh, in the forward pocket and he threw it to the centre of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so it's floodings everywhere, Clint. Yeah, we've got to do something about it. Um, we always talk some issues here at half time every Sunday. And uh, the talking point in Melbourne yesterday was this the Saturday lift out of the Herald Sun in Melbourne. The headline. Has Brad Otten's got the ticker to turn it around? And uh, the centre spread was um, even more pronounced. What the hell is wrong with Otto? Well, Brad Otten's played a pretty good game last night. Before we talk about it, let's hear what Geelong coach Mark Thompson had to say to the press afterwards. I thought there was far worse players last week than Brad Otten's playing the game. And uh, for some, some silly reason, you people want to assassinate him. And it's just rubbish. You people. You all of you. All of you. It's just rubbish. Leave him alone. That is the most pronounced display of a, a coach sticking up for a player we've seen for quite some time. Look, I thought that was sensational from Bomber Thompson. And that is the worst headline I've seen written on a footballer, as really? far as football is concerned. To insinuate that a footballer hasn't got a ticker, in other words, hasn't got a heart, I think is absolutely terrible. I believe I didn't actually read the whole article. Didn't want to once yep. I read the headline. The article was, uh, was all right. I don't think it was too scathing, but... To, uh, to say that Brad Ottens hasn't got a heart, I, I just think it's terrible and uh, agree with everything Mark Thompson said. Well, Jared, you write for the lift out. Obviously, you're not responsible for uh, everything that goes in it, neither is the journalist that puts the story no. in. Would Trevor Grant have been concerned? He was the author of the report. Would he have been concerned by the headline? I'm not sure I'd be concerned, uh, but I would agree with Wayne. It, uh, to me, it was a new level of personal attack as a headline, and uh, it certainly took my attention, and I guess that is what it's designed to do. But I, you had to feel for Brad Ottens, and I'm pleased he played well, and I'm, uh, I also think that Mark Thompson came out in the strongest possible terms and defended his player because you start to ask the question, OK, if that's the new level of personal headline, where do we go to from here? Now, I read the article closely and it uh, quoted a couple of uh, his former mentors, yep. Greg Hutchison and uh, Danny, Danny Frawley. Frawley. And I, yeah. I thought their comments were good and I think that they, uh, that if uh, Bradley read those comments that uh, he would say, well, that's fair enough. But when you preface it all by, that, uh, by the headline, which I think uh, was plumbing new lows, in my view, then uh, it, I guess uh, Mark Thompson is going to be driven to defend his player in a personal way like that. Mm. And a lot of people just go by what the headline's all about. They don't go into the, the I, nuts and bolts of the story. I actually spoke to the person that uh, penned that article today or the headline and I challenged him on it and he believes that that is the question that's being asked by people after uh, the Mike Sheehan put Brad Ottens at number 17 in his top 50. He mm. thinks that after all Australian selection two or three years ago that uh, he has not delivered on expectations. But... I mean, this is a personal business as well. I don't, I don't, I'm, not think, I'm not sure we're in the, in the business of uh, going down the character assassination role. Yeah, but, Jared, you can, you can uh, talk about a player. You can say that he's in form, out of form. But to say that he hasn't got a heart as a footballer is probably the worst thing that you can say about a footballer. I was, I was really disappointed. In it. We'll find out after this break what sort of heart the Fremantle Docker players have as to whether or not they can come back from this 20-point deficit. 7-7 seven, seven to 4-5 at halftime. On our way to the break, the score updates from the other two matches being played today. So if you don't want to know the score just yet, look away now. Trent Noble and the Tigers defending a 20-point lead. As we're set to get the second half underway at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Richmond pursuing an unbeaten three-game winning streak. All alongside of Pavlich. He has stayed alongside of the Dockers start in this match. Pavlich with just the two kicks in the first half. Parker to Richardson. Here's Wayne Schwoz. Stephen Dodd, happy news or good news, better news for the Fremantle supporters and Stephen Dodd's family. He actually jogged his way across from the Fremantle rooms. He's sitting on the bench. Uh, it's not as bad as what they initially thought, a pinch cartilage, but won't take any further part in the game. But the injury is not as severe as first thought. Good on you, Wayne. Thank you. We're having a look at Richo getting a little excited with Parker and Longmuir as the second half gets underway with Tuck. 
hurrying the kick away. He had a good first half, 13 possessions. Delidio. Now Pettifer, wheeling around onto the right, popping it up. Simmons, the man in front. Cracker awaiting the crumbs. And there's a high fend off from Simmons, Docker free kick. Interesting setup up forward for the crow for the uh, Dockers. Wayne? Yeah, young uh, well, young Johnson has gone to centre half back after kicking a goal with his third kick. Noble wins the free as Shammer gets in his back. But the Dockers aren't playing anybody inside their forward 50. Everybody's just pushing up the ground. Chaffee. Good carry, penetrating kick, two on one, Fremantle the numbers. You can see why. They just want to flood back now, Freo, and try and get a break. Parker to midfield. It means that kick there, Clinton, just has to find a target. Webster, the man put under pressure. Ditto Sandilands. Good effort. Shammer waiting for an awkward bobbling ball. Is tied up. No chance to get rid of it. A bounce for good result. They got Hazelby forward again. Straight Medhurst down. and Pavlitz. They're the three men they're going to rely upon to kick the winning score. The Doctors started last year so well, 5-1 and one after six rounds. Lost their last four to miss the finals by a game. In danger of falling to 1-3 and three today. Medhurst going to the hot spot. Hazelby wrestling. Unable to control it. Newman for Graham. For Bowden. And he's a good user of the football from down back. And good poise there. Just allowing Coughlin to run to space. Cracker does likewise. Can't mark. Could be costly. Grover. Kick smothered by a desperate tuck. Now, if it stays in for Petter for the Tigers or a chance. It will. Richo leads towards him. Pettifer didn't see him. Kicks it high towards Brown and Thornton. McFarlane there as well against Cracker. Good mark. If you joined us late, the Dockers without three key players. Hedlund, Polak and Matthew Carr, late withdrawals. McFarlane on Cracker. You back McFarlane every single yep. time over his head, but uh, Cracker probably got the advantage on the ground. The cracker would need a ladder to complete. Black's kick, short, Delidio, clever. Oh, two Tigers back in the goal square. Take your oh. pick. Brown says, Richo, it's mine, but you can have it. And Richo kicks the goal. Oh, just. That was nearly one of his best. Oh, oh. oh Richo was in the goal square. We're sitting 40 metres away, three levels up. Jared reached out and just about marked it. And that's what I love about Matthew Richardson. He sees the funny side of that. He has nearly missed that oh. from one metre out. He yeah. nearly hit the post, Jared. It, this is hopefully this will show it. And just have a look at the trajectory of this football. <laughs> it goes sideways. <laughs> Richo, keep the body oh. weight going forward, mate. Good oh. evidence. That's landed in our commentary box. Flood <laughs> one minute, Richo the next. Back to back goals, bracketing half time for Richo, and the Tigers are out to their biggest lead of the afternoon. Let's get the next goal free, man. It could turn into an avalanche. Hyde. Yes! Long kick forward by Kellaway. Dangerous kick. Oh. They've got so many tall options. Look at him go. He's lifting. He's bumped fairly, and that's a good bump by Parker. And the kick out of bounds on the full. I'd like to see Freo get another one, Wayne, just because uh, this game could just blow out, I think, if uh, they get two or three and the lead expands to an unwinnable spot for Fremantle. Richmond getting on top through the midfield, winning through all the stoppages, winning at the set of bounces. Thornton has a loose man on the northern wing. They'd be happy with his game so far. Here's Grover. For Walker. For Medhurst. Still yet to handball this year. Still yet to handball this year. Still. Oh! Joel, it was yours, but Coglin's there to clean up. Well, we've discussed uh, that type of play all day. We don't want to become repetitive, but that was absolutely terrible. Pettifer from 55 gives Brown a chance to fly. Thornton pressuring him. Cracker caught. McManus, terrific tackle. Longmuir for Carr. Now Medhurst from halfback. Just to space. Grover and Walker. And Walker should be able to run clear of Noble and Dust. Sanderlands is on all by himself. Walker chipping it short. 
Well, maybe it was intended for Sandilands. It was a poor kick. And Joel Bowden is urged on by his teammates to run and carry the football. Feeding Pettifer. Goes to Richo. One out with Parker. The body strength of Richo is too much. And he kicks his fourth goal. And the Tigers are marching away. Right now, Matthew Richardson is the leading goal kicker in the AFL. He's got 14 for the year. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether Richo likes set shots. He's had a rush of blood. The last two marks he's taken. On that occasion, too strong for Parker. Fantastic goal. On the other hand, Walker going into the forward 50 for the Dockers. You've got a guy, Sanderland, seven foot tall, and he puts it at his toes. I just having a pet for kicking the ball long. It was a pretty good kick to Richo. He threw it out. Why he played on is beyond me, but he did. Some concerns for Chris Connolly. Here's Wayne Schwass. Well, Fremantle, very good side when they have possession. They run hard forward, but if you want to go a long way in this football season, there's got to be pressure the other way, and it's non-existent at the moment. And right now, that season is heading south in a hurry, in danger of slipping to one and three. I reckon Steiner put Pavlich in the defence. I know that Chris Connolly is... Uh, Effectively said he's going to play mm. centre forward and stay there, but he's just not getting near the footy and you might as well put him down there and Try the small forward option that they had uh, Last year so many times his return today Pavlich two kicks and two marks So largely an ineffective afternoon as Kellaway now Risky ball McManus though can't spoil Delidio showing some good signs in his fourth AFL game Going towards Coglin, who had a step on Hazelby. Had to give away the free. Hazelby catching up ground. Paul, two leggies. Paul. Two. Richo, he's demanding the ball. Demanding the ball. Let's go. Oh, he's turned down, so he'll head back towards the goal square. Hyde. Over the top for Newman. Short for Stafford. And this is it. It's very much like... A basketball move. They've got three big blokes who work a triangle. And if one goes forward, the other one goes to the right, the other one stays left. Yeah, it's and it's working well. Terry Wallace, a big basketball fan and player. Yeah, he played A great basketball in uh, Melbourne. And he would know very much the way they are utilizing the yep. key to use the basketball terminology. Well, to use basketball, would this be a three-pointer if Stafford <laughs> kicks this? <laughs> I reckon it would be, yeah. Keep going. The lead is 32 points. There, Cookie. This to really make it ugly for the Dockers as Stafford lines back and kicks truly. <laughs> Richmond have kicked the last four goals of this match and they are blowing Fremantle away. They are, and uh, the signs are ugly, Wayne. Down on the boundary line, it's Wayne Swass. Yeah, look, Jared, uh, when Greg Stafford took that mark, I had a look uh, defensive end for Freeman, or in their forward end, I should say. A lot of players with hands on their hips. There's no direction, there's no pointing, no instructions. And I hate to say this for Freeman or supporters, but I think they've chucked the game in. It's too hard now. Let's get out of here, get back to WA and set up again for next week. Thanks, Ooh. Wayne. Well, you wouldn't like to think that uh, the Fremantle Dockers are doing that. It's an interesting observation. Carr feeding the hand pass for Cook. 38 points adrift. Medhurst with the mark. Delivery out wide. Doubling back. Murphy. Graham read it very well. Little KB handball to himself. Pick up was good. Tiger fans happy with their newcomer. Webster, though. Chops it off before it goes out of bounds. Here's Carr. Short ball for Cook. Chris, one more to Chris. Thank you. Go down. Dockers having trouble the scorers in the opening 10 minutes of this third term. What? Cook stabbing it wide to Bell. Just got lost out there from a Tiger perspective. And now Peter Bell. If they need a captain's goal, this would be it. I mean, Peter Bell will be looking to pass this off. This may test him for distance. 29 years of age. The captain since 2002 is missing badly. Just getting through for a behind. Well, they're getting their shots from wide out because uh, 
Numbers got back. You saw Greg Stafford drop into the hole there. He kicks a goal two minutes ago. Gets back in defence. They're playing a good style of football, Richmond, at the moment. Thanks, Troy. That's it. Matty, that's Who would have thought 14 losses in a row to win 2004? And here they are on the brink of a 3-1 and one start to 2005. Kellaway well, wide to Gasper. Kerry Wallace clearly had a plan in mind when he recruited both Noble and Simmons. And we're seeing the value of that uh, here today. Stafford has always had the capacity to be a top-line ruckman forward. And uh, he's doing more of it in the forward line than he is in the ruck, but he does have his role to play there, and he has done that. Simmons is uh, very much the same. He's an excellent shot at goal when he's on song. He's a good ruck, mobile ruckman. But the way they're alternating the three tools through the middle, sorry, through the forward line, is... Uh, He's probably a first in uh, this era of football. And not that we'll look too far ahead just yet, but on that point, St Kilda next week without Kaczynski, without Penny at the moment through injuries, yeah. the Tigers indoors at the Dome could have some potential in that match. A 5 o'clock start next Sunday. 37 points, though. They've still got a long way to go in this one before it's in the books. Hyde going wide for Pettifer. Good spoil by Grover. And it's over for a boundary throw-in on the northern wing. Guys. Chris Connolly would have to be so disappointed with the way this afternoon has transpired, although repeating three big names oh, out, nice. Carr, Polak and Hedlund, late withdrawals. It did leave them undermanned as Cook in a wrestle with Campbell. Shoveling the ball out, Chaffee knocking it on. It's on the full. And that's a good call. It's actually getting to the concerning stage for Fremantle. They've pushed the best, uh, well, three of the more favoured clubs in the competition to uh, the nth degree this season without knocking them over. And yet here they come up against a side that was expected to finish bottom four. They may have got that all wrong. And they're getting a bit of a flogging. Delidio shorts it for Brown and Grover put his body on the line for the spoil, a one percenter there. I think you made a good point though, Clinton. When you have three of your better players out, it changes the whole structure of the side. Yeah. We're not making excuses for Fremantle, but uh, let's be honest, when when you do that, it can uh, it can make a big difference. That's a big. Gee, no Tiger Ruckman there, so Longmuir could do what he want. Got it to Black, McManus. By Uncle Punch. Havlich with essentially a flood on 34 players in the Tiger attacking hey. half. He was one of them. This is Campbell's kick smothered by Farmer. Well done to Jeff Farmer, still working hard. Hasn't had uh, the best day as far as possessions are concerned, but the pressure he puts on around the football is uh, excellent. And emerging quickly into screen there for the smother. It's just been good to see him calm down a bit, not be angry and being involved in all the uh, nonsense off the ball. We saw him kick a goal last week, and for the first time in his career, he just got up off the ground and run back to the centre. No celebration whatsoever. So, uh, And we've seen Hawthorne's Mark Williams temper his exuberance as well, but particularly yesterday after six goals against the Lions on this ground. What an upset that was. It's been a season of upsets as Andrew Raines tries to slip the tackle. Newman giving it for Campbell. Tigers building again. Campbell going long. Richo in a big wrestle with Parker and a couple of others and had no chance. Well, Luke McFarlane just got a nice whack across the chops from Justin Longmuir. But they were both going to footy. Can't blame them. Cook high ball out wide. Chaffee keeps it in momentarily at least. Out on the full. Hayes will be just six possessions. He'll be disappointed in his return, but you've got to pay credit to Chaffee, who's done a good job all day. Yes, Coglin. Yep. Coglin. Coglin. Coglin winning 18 possessions and five marks. Chaffee, of course, is on Josh Carr. And done a fine job there. Yep, they've blocked them down, and uh, that's been the engine room for Fremantle for a long time. And Hayes will be going to the wing over the head of McManus. Bowden got him. Sanderlands. Now Hazelby's kick. Took a little long. Delidio the smother. Hazelby the recovery. Now Webster. Scotty! Long inside the 50. Dockers need someone up here to stand up. Tigers with the wealth of numbers and Tivendale running through the lines. Simmons. Brown. Long to Richo. One out. Back him. Oh. He's got it. 
Well, the umpire's in perfect position, but that was the classic point in case. You had Simmons running at the player with the ball, and Richo, who stole it in our forward, he ran to the goals. It is a triangle offense. We have gone back to the 90s. Thank God Richo <laughs> kicking the ball long and direct to a big key forward. One out. The umpire didn't pay a stupid free. It was a test of strength. Richo was stronger. Another shot at goal. This is the type of footy that the crowd comes to see, not the chipping it around soccer style. And the bandwagon is filling up because Richo and the Tigers are on the march. He's got five. We're into blowout territory now on Fox Footy. 43 points the lead. And he looks like he's enjoying himself, Richo. He knows that this is the type of game that uh, he may well end up with 10 goals here. Well, well let's see if we can get on screen Terry's triangle. Because here is uh, Tivendale bursting down now. He can look up Brown. He sees Simmons coming forward, but Richo's charged down. And the strength allows Greg Tivendale to uh, get it to Brown, as we said. And Brown's such a wonderful player with the ball in front. I think you have officially ordained it. Terry's triangle. It will be known forevermore. Here's Wayne Schwartz. Stewart, uh, Chris Connolly must have heard your call. Matthew Pavlich is lined up on the old member's side of the ground now on the wing with Ray Hall. Might as well change his position. It's Avalanche time. They've got to yeah. think percentage now. He's got to stick him deep. That horse has bolted. Oh, my goodness. That's the best of the lot. Richo's yeah. going to line up number six. That's how I put Pavlich. Straight under Richardson. Bring him into the game somehow. Got to think about next week now for Freo. This match is gone. And was gone some 15 minutes ago. The umpires get a bad rap. Can I say right now that they've made two great decisions. They haven't given away free kicks. It's been a test of strength. Yep. Richo there. They're allowing them to use their body. And uh, like I said before, Matthew Richardson would be absolutely loving this. One out in the goal square against Parker. He could end up with 10 goals. <laughs> Not kicking like that. <laughs> oh, Wayne. You did that. He's got five goals, one now. Does it every time, doesn't it? Oh, he is in game number 198. He has now kicked 595 career goals. So some milestones looming for Matthew Richardson. Enjoys playing against Fremantle coming into today's game. 31 goals in his last six games against the Dockers. He now has five today and 15 for the year. He's nearby here. Hyde will take it off him. Yes! What a good couple of weeks Hyde's having. Now McFarlane floating back takes the mark. Fremantle this quarter, one behind in 18 minutes. McManus yes! making Pavlich work. Well, to his credit, Matthew Pavlich is having a horrible day. He could have uh, been demonstrative there. It was a shocking kick from McManus coming in. But rather than uh, lose the cool and, I guess, uh, drag McManus down, he just put his head down and run back to his position. Cook with the free and wearing one. We've spoken a lot about Pavlich today, not playing so well. What about the job Hall's done? He's been terrific. He started slowly uh, under Terry Wallace, but he's brought him into the side and he's doing a good job. Master stroke by Terry to put hold because uh, we certainly didn't predict him to line up on a guy like Pavlich. Just his second game for the year, Ray Hall. As they affect the switch, the Dockers. Parker for Johnson, the first gamer. For Thornton. He will go to Grover. Thanks, Greg. Just loose yeah. man. Fallon didn't hear Graham coming. Easy one to spoil. Richo riding shotgun. Now can peel off. Graham, will he chip it over the top? Goes longer. Good kick. Reigns at the back to Lidio. Not this time. Good tackle there, boy. Reigns oh. kept it in for Cracker. He's dangerous. Now Brown missing. They're just getting back to Dion Woods. It was an excellent tackle. That was a goal. It was already, uh, the umpire had already started reaching for the flags when uh, <laughs> Delidio had the ball, but uh, he ran him down magnificently. And Mark Ryan there just showing his intelligence and experience. And done a couple of good things today, Mark Graham. Good kick in, Pavlich. Strong hands, McFarlane. Trying to find an opening going the wrong way. Gee, makes Sandilands. Now the guy's only 211 centimetres, makes him bend down to pick it up. Bell for Woods over the head of Thornton. It's not pretty. 
Johnson. Down the line he goes, Farmer. Good kick for Webster. And now Webster can line up to try and kick his first goal of the season. A lot of talk about whether football has actually gone forward with their skills. They're full-time now. I uh, honestly believe the skills aren't any better today than what they were 20 years ago. 20? You go back 20 Just years. Okay. Your arms around him. Here we are, Kel. If today's any example, he's, he's, he's going at you as well. Probably the same as you as well. Luke Webster, one of the late call-ups for the Dockers. Had an injury hit a couple of years by way of his knee. This is his 10th senior game. His team badly needs a goal. And he hits the behind post on the full. The margin remains at 45 points. Time on third quarter. More than five minutes to go. And the Tiger fans are enjoying the afternoon. Brown's under a lot of pressure. Got it on to Bowden nicely. Geez, he has run 25 metres. Yeah, he's run too far. No advantage for Farmer. Mark, see you. Thanks, Mark. Hazelby, the recipient of the free kick. Well, unlike the Tigers, they haven't got the luxury of having a Richo or a Stafford or a Simmons to kick it long to. So Hazelby kicks it to a noble. Graham not entirely ready for a bullet like handball recovers well now Brown right on it, don't go. forward structure inoperative for the Dockers this quarter Bowden Still late. Tigers building up the numbers possession wise they've had 35 more uses of the football today for a 45 point lead Tivendale goes go long to Richardson he has a step on Parker and he wins a free. You're talking about the forward structure, Clinton. I, I reckon the loss of Simmons to Fremantle has not been discussed all that much, but I think we're seeing today how much they are missing Simmons. They haven't had just a long meal has been a disappointment. I don't think he has developed the rate mm -hmm. that uh, his high pick in the draft would suggest he would. And he's a, a rangy kid, and we hope that will happen in the future. But without Simmons, they've got Pavlich. That's robbed them of Pavlich in the middle. And I think it's hurting them big time, a lot more than they anticipated. Testing shot here for Richardson beyond the 50. And it won't be a score. Stafford will fly with Sandilands. Shammer waiting down, held perhaps without a play on the call. Woods, Bell, Johnson, now Cook. Lost it. Campbell approaches. Farmer with a clever knock for Cook. Handball stolen by Brown. Cook with the intercept and now Black can clear out wide for Hazelby. McManus looks up. Has to handle. Hazelby caught. Tigers running with confidence. Newman to Brown. Richo leads from the goal square. Brown goes to him. Question of accuracy now for Matthew as he lines up number six. Haven't they had a great relationship uh, in their two years together, Wayne? You got him before me, Jared. I was about to say, Matthew Richardson would absolutely love Nathan Brown. His use of the football is exceptional, and every time he gets it, you can see Richo's eyes light up. They are a dynamic duo, so we'll call this guy Batman. <laughs> I don't think Nathan That's would uh, like to be Robin, though. Quit. He doesn't mind dressing up, though, does he? <laughs> Tell you what, the way uh, Richo's kicked in this last 10 minutes, you could call him the Joker, but uh, <laughs> let's just see how he does this time. Number six. Back to Batman. The lead beyond a half a century. 51 points of five golden none premiership quarter. Yes, it looked at half-time as if uh, a pole action was on the cards and unfortunately Fremantle were unable or unable to maintain their pressure through the middle of the ground. I reckon Terry went in at half-time and said, we've got big power forwards here, fellas. We've got to win the ball, get it in there quickly. Use Terry's triangle. <laughs> and it's worked. Three minutes from three-quarter time and it's the Tigers in a canter. 12-9 to 4-6. 
They're beginning to think percentage now. You saw Mick McGuan in the background. He was the Tigers' forward scout for this match. Went to Perth last week for the Derby. Delivered a very professional report to the coaching staff on how to beat the Dockers, and he'll be enjoying it here. As Richmond go forward again. The kick for Campbell, though, made him work. McManus now out wide. No one to kick to. Webster has to wait. Now, good of Shammer to run to his right to try and present out wide. He's got Thornton in the centre corridor with Farmer. But again, he can only bomb to a contest if he decides to go long. So look at this. He's got to chip it. Tiger fans jeer. Looking forward already to next Sunday. Oh, I tell you what. It is going to be an exciting affair. Anzac Eve, Richmond and St Kilda at the Telstra Dome from five. As Medhurst marks out wide. The Dockers with just one behind this quarter. Medhurst sees an option at the top of the square. Sandilands the target. Chaffee waiting down for the crumbs. Now Jackson. Bowder. Out wide, the lead provided by Campbell with another veteran in McManus. Good tackle, McManus. Nearly a whistle. Wow. Kellaway, dumped by Shanna. Getting a little agricultural here as Walker. For Cook. Now McManus. To centre half forward. Webster the sit. Ball's played well today. Handball here stolen by Medhurst. Gee, even has been tackled, he didn't want to handball it. He may have got one out. The statisticians might credit him with his first for the year. Reigns to Graham. Didn't see Carr coming. Pavlich now. Murphy on the run. Scrubs the kick for a boundary throw. Now, I'm not sure who's on Nathan Brown. Actually, he's going off as we speak. But he was on his own on centre wing for quite some time. I think it's Woods. He plays uh, with a 40-foot leg rope. Straight at the ball. How long should the leg rope break one on Nathan Brown? It should be uh, two feet, two inches. <laughs> Here's Jackson for Graham. Good hands for Tuck. Still time for the Tigers to add to this onslaught in the third term. Stafford in front. Look at the run. They're playing with run and confidence. Paul for Campbell. Richo wants it again. Will Stafford go to him? He goes himself. The big fella. Another goal. Becoming a slaughter. Richo says, hey, I was on. But, mate, you picked the right option there. Oh, you got to love his expressions, Richo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, uh, he was on, by the way, but Stafford had the confidence. And, uh, Jared, the triangle. We've, yeah. got, uh, we've heard of Pagan's Paddock. Will we be hearing about uh, Wallace's triangle for the next 10 years? Terry's triangle has a touch yeah. more alliteration. <laughs> yeah. What we're going to hear about is plenty of Tiger supporters because the bandwagon's filling up. Terry's triangle this term netting six goals. Who's kicked them? Two players. The big fellas, Richardson and Stafford. Simmons in the ruck and Noble resting and Cook caught is there time for one more here's Hyde going long and direct Stafford this time wrestled out of it play on the call Longmuir see Greg Stafford was stiff he was bulldozed out of it by uh, <laughs> young Johnson he's got some strength hasn't he the young kid a good build Thornton a good mark for Shammer just, not, just no, not sure you're allowed to use that type of strength as he did Jeff. that's true fair point when they met here last year, the Dockers had a scoreless opening quarter, came back to win. Here they've had a one-point third quarter, and the Tiger fans are standing. Yes, they are, and they've got plenty to talk about. And plenty for the Dockers to think about. Wayne Swass was pretty skating of them through the third quarter. What do they do in this position, Wayne? Well, well, he's not there. Wayne, Wayne is short of a hinces right now, as uh, I think Chris Connolly. As we saw there, the, the, the uh, two guys that did the damage, Stafford and Richardson walking to the huddle, very pleased with themselves. Great uh, third quarter by both of them, two goals. 
And great to see the Tigers going long and direct to the goal square. And listen to the buzz around this stadium. Terry Wallace getting the applause as he makes his way out onto the ground. The question now, what will the final margin be? It's 57 points with a quarter remaining. The Tigers in control, 39 to 4-6. Oh. We hope you're enjoying this fully interactive replay on Fox Footy Channel. Coming up after the game, join Clinton Gribus, Jared Healy and Wayne Carey for the Fox Footy Active Wrap. Take a closer look at the game, as well as both coaches' media conferences in full. Wednesday on AFL Love Match, host Rebecca Wilson pairs up two AFL legends as former Geelong Premiership star Doug Wade takes on Melbourne Best and Fairest winner Stan Owls. What does PMS stand for? Post post-menstrual situation. <laughs> AFL Love Match, a real test of teamwork. Wednesday on Fox Footy Channel. Thursday on Fox League Teams. Mate, we're actually live. The boys give you the inside word on the AFL. Sevalinko last week struggled for three quarters. What? Well, that's what he's calling. That's what the boy's calling. Who's calling him that? Me. <laughs> and share their informed and unique look at the game. Uh, yeah, not mate. I hope not. Fox League Teams, Thursday on Fox Footy Channel. One, two, three, break time. Five classic comedies. It's too hot. Five nights a week. That's your damn change of life. Five star entertainment. I went through that ten years ago. Then how about a change of personality? Every weeknight from five, catch the Fox Classics Comedy Block. The Golden Girls at five. Remember your hunch about your nephew, Angelo? You said one day he'd be Pope. Dorothy, you gotta pay attention. I said one day he'd sell dope. <laughs> Everybody loves Raymond, 5.30 and 7.30. You kicked me! I did? Oh, right in the garden of good and evil. Home improvement at 6. And let's grunt as a family. <laughs> Double episodes of MASH from 6.30. One, two, three, break time! Spin City at 8. Very trippy stuff. Classic comedies every weeknight, five-star entertainment. I am so excited! The Comedy Block, weeknights from 5, Fox Classics. Undoubtedly, the most outstanding Australian television drama in a long time. The best drama to come out of Australia in 2004. An extraordinary series and one that shames most free-to-air attempts at local storytelling. Nothing short of brilliant. What are you doing? Just waking Daddy up. I missed you, but I love you. Have you ever loved? You know, the word I think you're looking for is scared. Now, W brings you every kiss, every tear, every moment, every episode, every night, in one week. Stop crying all the time. Nominated for five Logie Awards, including Best Drama Series, Most Outstanding Actress, and Most Outstanding Actor. Love My Way, every day. Coming soon to W. An amazing goal. Here's Gazza, the great man. Left foot snap. Oh, A nail-biting finish. Lockett, the most important kick of his career. Any score will do. He kicks the Classic Quarters, Monday on Fox Footy Channel. Weeknights on the Fever, footy's only talkback TV show. We debate all the day's hot topics, talk to the game's biggest names. The umpires have uh, caught on to that one, though, now. And, of course, you can have your say. White Line Fever, weeknight, 7.30 Eastern, on Fox Footy. Eclectic, exuberant, erratic, ecstatic. Matthew Richardson today, the star with six goals. His numbers for the course of the afternoon, 13 possessions, nine marks and six goals. Tigers by 57 points with a quarter remaining. Nathan Brown with 25 touches and a goal. Hyde with 22, Coughlin 18. While for the Dockers, Heath Black 
with 21 possessions. Richo could end up with 10, said Wayne Carey. Let's go down to Wayne Schwoss. Wayne, you said during that quarter that the Fremantle Dockers looked like they had chucked the talent. Essentially, uh, proven right by the way that quarter finished. Yeah, look at ground level. When your side's struggling, Clinton, you look for something or someone to make a statement. When your side's in trouble, somebody's got to take charge. Now, there's a number of leader, lead, leadership players at Fremantle. Not one of those players, from what I could see, made a statement or did something to arrest the situation. That's the disappointing thing. It just gave, I got the impression during that quarter it had got a little bit too hard. They know that they're struggling. Get the game out of the way and move on to next week. It's not something that you want said, but I still stand with what I said. Thanks, Wayne. Final term from the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Dockers playing for pride. Richmond playing for percentage. And a three-game winning streak. Sandilin's getting it down. Tuck trying to clear. Cook going short for Pavlich. On the 50 right. And he collects his third mark of the afternoon. Thank you. That's your line, Yet to Matty. kick a goal. Booted a couple in the derby. Six for the season. He's had a great season to date. This has been disappointing, obviously. But I can't help but feel, Wayne, that too often today with the exception of that time his first lead hasn't been on it it's just been so slow through the middle oh kicks through the ball beautifully sails through to the first row and he kicked it from beyond 50 good way to start and i should mention that match next week st kilda and richmond live and exclusive on fox footy next sunday evening I don't think you can uh, lay blame on Matthew Pavlich. He's tried hard. He's, uh, I'm not sure of how many leads he would have had today. I'm, I know as a key forward at the Kangaroos, I used to count how many leads you had. He's probably had 30 or so leads. The work rate's there. Do you blame the on-ballers? I mean, they well, just to me, to the me, ball, the, uh, through well. the middle, it's just come too slow. Don't push him in. Don't push him in. Wait, don't the Come on, guys, straight up. 51 points the margin. Umpires have been good with their bouncing and decision making today. Kick it now. Hi. Straight down the middle. Yeah. Powerful. Looks good, the back. doesn't it? Give Stafford a chance and he doesn't let them down. It's uncomplicated. You've got to have the you've got to have the personnel to be able to do it. I guess where it's frustrating is where there is personnel and players go wide. They don't even look long. <laughs> Just chuckling at the umpire saying, you might have got a fingernail on it, but that's not going to count. <laughs> well, we talk about this week after week going long and direct, and uh, great to see Richmond doing it today. And like you said, they have got the firepower down there, and when they fire, boy, do they look dangerous. Sir. Right now, you say Richmond are a final side. I agree, Jared. And it's only been the emergence of Stafford and today Simmons that I think has made us stand up and say, well, we're now seeing these guys work at their best under Terry Wallace. And the, look, the pressure and the defence hasn't been there. So whether or not they can stand up when they're playing more quality sides with full uh, artillery is another option. But they look today as if they're uh, a big chance to play finals. And don't forget Noble in the ruck. And Terry, a history of doing that. I remember his first year at the Whit Noble. As Coggle dumped black. And some heavy contact. Pettifer centering ball for Chaffee. There's one other little wild card uh, that Terry's got up his sleeve. His name's Tambor. We haven't seen much of him. Brown swinging it back. The acting skipper joins the party. Nathan gets his second. And Richo and Brownie run together. Embrace. That's one back to Brownie from Richo. A handball. You won't see too many of them, I wouldn't think, uh, Nathan. Very rare to get a handball off a power forward, Wayne. Right? It'll be a big night in the bat cave. <laughs> it's been exciting footy. Oh. If you're a Fremantle supporter, it's a horrible day. But as a neutral, it's yep. been good to see the emergence of the Tigers. Yeah, They're back under Wallace. I don't care who does it. It is the awakening of a giant. Richmond notionally still part of the big four in Melbourne. Richmond, Carlton, Collingwood and Essendon. There's some other clubs, the likes of Melbourne and St Kilda, trying to break into that mix. But if Richmond can get the army going, look out. 58 points to the good early in the last quarter as Walker goes wide for Hazelby. 
allows it to bounce, and it runs away. Not ideal if I was a Frio uh, supporter or if somebody in the club at Freeman, I'll chuck the stat sheet away. Get rid of the possession sheet. Just have a look at uh, maybe oh. possessions inside forward 50, maybe marks inside forward 50. Well, they were worst in the league coming into this match for marks inside 50. Look at that. Because no just chance. possession through That's midfield is really not indicative of, uh, of anything at the moment. They've had... Well, I won't tell you how much they've had, Sorry, because someone just changed the thinking, Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> you did that purposely. I'm, I'm, I'm just digging out the marks inside 50 for you. You make a great point, Jared. You look at a guy like Peter Bell, who has been a sensational recruit for the Fremantle Dockers and been a great captain. He's had 20 possessions today and really hasn't... Uh, hasn't I haven't... Uh, seen him get any of those balls in important uh, areas of the ground well disposals richmond's had 299 and Fremantle's had 264 so there's not a huge difference and yet the difference on the scoreboard has been unbelievable and a five goal afternoon for the dockers a lower score against the Tigers 6 10 46 achieved twice here two years ago and at Subi in 2001 all he did is got it he's right in traffic he's trying it's came it's came bang off another player I'm positive Kay, I'm telling you Simmons open forward line the bounce important here favors the Tigers <laughs> Oh, Batman and Robin just <laughs> weren't on the same wavelength there for a moment. And Thornton. It's a good kick. Runs away with it. Ah, oh, Bell. Good kick, Thornton. Lionel, love the way he runs off that half-back line. He gives him some drive. Pedifer. Terry Wallace came in talking about the Tigers aim if they are going to lose this season they'll play entertaining football they wanted a 16 goal a game average well they're on track to get it today as tuck marks inside the 50 was very very close to playing off given some latitude there if that wasn't play on a few decisions that have made, been made earlier in the year yeah. Yeah, one think, being scott lucas yeah, i think i think latitude is the uh, the right word from clinton he was off. Hey, He's only kicked three goals in his AFL career. This is game number seven. From 50. Pushes it to the right-hand side. 36 points. It's not a big return for uh, nearly four quarters of footy. Another good build-up by Richmond, though. Come into their forward 50. Uncontested mark. Don't go forward, mate. Got Sanderlands deep. So they've got some height down there. But the ball's just not getting in at the moment. Black on the end of the McFarlane kick. Fremantle's leading ball winner today. 24 possessions, 7 marks. Delivers out wide for Walker. Now the 1-2. Walker short. Medhurst the target. Good hands. He's got great hands. A great vertical leap is Medhurst. He'll be disappointed to hear the... Official statisticians didn't give him that handball earlier. Webster now waiting down. Play on, ball's out. Gee, the Tigers have got loose men upfield if they can break open. They can't as Reigns is tied up. We'll have a bounce. You just made the point, Jared, that they've sent Sanderlands to full forward, yet the ball comes into their forward 50, 20 metres out from goal. His work rate isn't good enough to get to that contest. He's a seven-foot guy. He's got to be in that pack. Well, they tell us uh, from Frio that he's uh, a super athlete, that he can run a 400 metres the same uh, time as most of their best players, if not their best. So he's got to just read the play better to be there. Otherwise, you get a two-on-one scenario like that for Pavlich. Medhurst. Missing. All clear. It was never pinned, Peter. Ball was never pinned. He had his arms free and he handballed it. Peter Bell just having a quiet to discussion with the umpire be frustrating all day for uh, the Dockers players Jackson squeezes it out wide Delidio 
Well, good pace from Delia. He's got some toe, hasn't he? I haven't seen the athleticism used much up forward, but uh, that was good. Oh, this is great football. The kick just needed another metre for Richo. Oh, sorry, Troy. And now the Dockers can clear. Thornton for Shammer. You right, Troy? Delivers sorry, for mate. Longmuir. It's 14 possessions, Justin Longmuir. But you got to do something oh. I thought he had a good second quarter where he went into the ruck and uh, really had an influence on the game. Newman short, Brown from centre-half back can go straight down the corridor. Reigns, son of Jeff with the handball to Noble. Didn't see that Newman was under enormous pressure. Now the Dockers through Cook. Trying to shrug Newman, got it for Shammer. Backs himself, fumble, recovery. Black, caught, high. You've got it, you've got it, you've got it. It's okay. It's okay, that's why I paid the high one. You know what give them. Thank you. A little bit of by play. Fifty-eight points, the deficit for the Dockers. And the Tigers have got numbers back here. Interesting. Medhurst, when he leads, he leads hard. He's got a good leap. He just doesn't know when to bail out of a leap. If he's not going to be used, he has to prop, turn back, get back to the goal square, and contest the ball back there. Just doesn't know when to bail out. Ambitious if Mike's going to kick it. He might. No. Touched on the line. Noble. People often talk why Jonathan Brown can take so many marks running back with the fly to the ball. Yeah. The reason for that is because he knows when to bail out of his lead, turn back and run back with the flight. Keep himself in the contest. Exactly right. And I think if there was anything that Matthew Pavlich could uh, take out of today, it would be exactly that. Exactly I think, that. I think that's been one issue that he hasn't done, and it uh, is a great point by you. Newman to Cracker. If you're a young bloke like Pavlik, still you. learning the craft at centre half forward. Them's words you'd be taking notice of. Richo one out in the goal square again. Cracker going long, giving his buddy the chance. Kept his feet. Parker does well. Good duel this. And Richo's going to line up number seven after receiving a free kick. Both here got each other, Parker. Both here. Berkey, that was your one. Great decision by Andrew Cracker. Could have gone wide. You but uh, decided to go to the one-out contest in Matthew Richardson, and why not? He's on fire. Good duel. Like a couple of kids scrapping in the playground there, and McFarlane eventually catching oh. him with that knee. Now, has it knocked Richo around with his Don't geographic guide here? He's lining up for number seven. There. 40 metres out. Yep. Could have kicked 10. 6-2 <laughs> and one out of bounds. Just seemed to overstride a little bit there at the finish. Didn't get himself balanced. Robert Walls predicted early on that he would kick 17. <laughs> and maybe he will. I hope, I hope we're there that day as yeah. Cracker takes the mark. Will it be next week? Who will play on him? Hudson. Come around two metres from here. We'll have to wait and see. Andrew oh, Cracker now, he's had an enterprising Martin, afternoon. Greg, just take, walks out. Just on the Richardson-Parker duel, you, you can't you really blame me. Parker. Thanks, he's done everything he can. Uh, One-hour situations like that, Richardson uh, has a few inches on him. Uh, very difficult. Cracker starts it right, doesn't bend it back. Olak, Matthew Carr, and Des Hedlund. Three big omissions, big, yep. big omissions, and uh, it's just difficult to know what impact those three would have had. Fremantle next week, hosting Carlton and Subiaco on Saturday afternoon. And let's be honest, if it is a virus, I wonder if there are players out there that aren't 100%. Yep. I mean, uh, only Chris Connolly will, uh, will be able to tell us that. It can sweep through football clubs dramatically as Brown with the good tackle trouble. on Woods. Holding the ball. You got one out of three. Must try and get rid of it. The umpires just look as if they enjoy that signal the most. No, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. Very theatrical. Yeah, they hold the initial pose yeah. and then the arms just sweep out. 
and the crowd especially if it's a home crowd like this go up as one and they must feel like a performer taking a final bow on stage haven't um, spoken to a few overseas uh, Americans that have watched uh, Australian rules football yeah it's a rule that they enjoy they love yelling out ball <laughs> do they know why they're yelling it out not really <laughs> well they're good day we don't <laughs> <laughs> 14-14 plays 5-8. Tigers spraying some chances late here. The margin is 60. Thornton Long, but to a contest. Oh, good mark in front, Longmuir. Hold there, Troy! Here's seventh mark. The Dockers' seventh contested mark of the day. He bounces the kick to Thornton, who has time before the Indians arrive. Although... The kick is sprayed and Tivendale with the mark. The Dockers with just one goal since half time. Oh, got the overlap here beautifully. Brown elects to get it off by hand. The unselfish thing to Newman and he sprays one as well. Scotty! It's just on the wrong side for a left footer. Probably had to kick that on his right foot if he, he was ever going to be a chance of kicking it. Yeah, all his weight was going the wrong way, but. Nathan Brown could have had a shot himself, but mm. I think sometimes players, they love linking up, and it's uh, half the challenge and half the enjoyment is trying to work your way through a group of defenders, particularly when the game's won. If the game's uh, still on, you go to the absolute percentage, but you can see there the Tiger players were thinking about bringing their other teammates into the match. Tigers with one goal, six in this final term, most of them kickable. But it was probably their only worry today. Kellaway. This is Reigns. Just his third senior game. A 19 year old out of Southport in Queensland. Got his dead. Jeff's number four on his back. Kicking long to half forward. Richardson will fly. Noble waiting down. Here's McFarlane. Now Pollock. And wasn't that great, great to see? A pack at centre half for yep. first time I've seen that for a bit for a while. Woods going long and direct. Sandilands Graham at the back. Will he concede behind? Well, that's dangerous. Pavlich for Medhurst. Awkward angle. Creative kick. And the Tigers, nearly to Tivendale, will clear regardless. Free kick Richmond, Farmer's frustrations finally getting the better of him. Campbell okay. running through the middle. Tivendale, back to the former skipper. Great hook up, Brown to finish it. Not quite, it would have been the team goal of the day. Yeah. Supporters were robbed there of a big roar. <laughs> everybody loves just looking for the build up and riding the build up. And everybody just wants to finish so they can scream. 14-16 now, Richmond. To 5-8. A shellacking in anybody's terms. Apparently Richmond's second best ever margin over the Dockers. They won't reach their all-time best. A 90-point win back in the 98 season. Jared, the game of Newman today, I, I think, has been uh, very good. Showed a uh, clean pair of hands. Yeah, he's an improving player at Newman. He's, uh, he's been given another responsibility and, I guess, more opportunity. Hardigan going out with injury, who's been a very good player for them so far this year. It's meant that uh, there's been more game time in the middle. Paul Midhurst searching for his first goal of the afternoon. Hasn't been close, really. A couple behinds, one out of bounds. It's just a dog of a day all round for the visitors. They won five games interstate last year. And as we mentioned coming in, had won three out of their last four at this ground, but in their history, just four wins from 19 games will become four from 20. Coglin. See, Nathan Brown has had his own football today. 33 possessions and 12 marks. And been instrumental, I would say, in six goals. Back of leader, back here. Goal assist figure for Nathan Brown today, enormous. Gasper going long. 
Oh, good hands. Nice, Mark nice. to Webster. Thanks, Wayne. Going to be an interesting press conference today. Terry, of course, will have it easy. Chris Connolly, you'll yeah. just have to face the music. And uh, I'm not sure there'll be any more unpleasurable aspect of coaching than having to face the music after a shellacking like this. Paul, that's your no, one, we mate. saw your uh, Mick Malthouse. Mark's here. How unpleasurable that experience was for him the other night. Yes. Was he early or was the press late? The press was late, and uh, they informed Mick that they like to get to the winning coach first. It would have gone down well. Didn't go down too well. Can Paul Nethurst break through for a Docker goal? That's better. Nethurst gets his first. And you can stay with us for our digital subscribers after the game. Exclusive post-match coverage by pressing red on your remote control we'll hear from terry wallace chris connolly their press conferences live and in full and plenty more after the match stay with us just by pressing red wayne swass said it three-quarter time some understand up medhurst has continued to try and had a couple of shots in the last quarter good to see him finish off uh, the good work from up the field seventh goal for the season Paul Medhurst coming off a year where he kicked 41 in 2004 and was the leading goal kicker for Fremantle for the second year in a row as Woods marks. It's been a lot of focus on the midfield and the forward line for Richmond, but I think that there's a couple of unheralded players. We spoke about Ray Hall. I think Darren Gasper again has put another good one together. Push out there to Graham. He should have got a free kick, but nothing. And Andy Callaway, I think, is another one who's just uh, started to rebuild his career under Terry Wallace. There has been a lot of talk about Richmond's back line. Gasper, Callaway, are they, are they quick enough? Are they strong enough to stand the key forwards of the opposition? It's fallen into their hands today because, really, uh, Fremantle haven't had any key forwards that have done anything. Joel Bowden, again, has racked up plenty of touches and been creative. Dockers deep in attack, searching to string two together late. And the free kick is going Fremantle's way for a shot at goal. High contact. What was this? Stefan Grant right the there shepherd. for the call. Byron Shammer the free. No. Got him. Oh. Oh. No, he hit him. And the Tigers debating the call. Good to see them playing it out as Kellaway awaits the replay on the big screen. He's been a great player for Richmond, Andrew uh, Kellaway. Mm. Like his brother, Duncan. I had the privilege of playing on a couple of times. They give 110% every week. Trent, don't go in. The replay just came up. Shammer kicks the goal. Dockers have got two in a row. It has been a forgettable afternoon for Fremantle in a final quarter that nobody will be... Rushing back to look at again on video as you see the shepherd from Callaway seemed to be high contact and a yeah. fair enough call. What he said though, Andrew, was that he just had the arms up and that uh, Byron Shammer ran into his the... arm. Which is uh, something that Wayne used to use the tribunal a number of times. <laughs> With great success. I won't go into that, Jared. Byron Shammer's goal makes the margin 49 points. He's didn't have a cut to the lip, but just sucking it in so the umpires can't see him. He wants to play the final four minutes. No, have the ball. That's fine. Have the ball. The MCG. Oh, I've got a couple of balls. It's got that special place in Australian sporting history. But we were down on the ground earlier, uh, Wayne, and uh, you just can't help be impressed with this new edition. The new stand is just going to make this the most amazing amphitheatre in Australia. When you walk out onto the ground now, uh, you wonder whether these players realise how special it is to run out here on the MCG and play in front of a uh, big crowd. I thought the Sydney uh, cricket ground, because its stands were so close to the ground, was intimate, yeah. gave you that intimacy. But this new stand here at the uh, at the MCG has that similar feel, but it's about twice as big. It is steep, and therefore people remain close. To the playing arena as Tivendale's kick is intercepted by Grover in the middle. 
We're so blessed now with the great stadia right around the country that football has built. I mean, the renovations to uh, Subiaco are superb, to Amy Stadium. Every state now has got a great uh, stadium to play in. Coming up on three minutes remaining in the final term. Tivendale carrying it a long way. Got his bounce in, now kicks long. Richardson charging out. Can't hang on, but no one would begrudge him taking it easy in the final few minutes. He's kicked six this afternoon and has been terrific. Woods going very wide. Heath Black just keeps it in. Parker. Kick. Wide for Farmer. Well weighted ball. Farmer the mark. <laughs> Tigers will move ahead. 10-6 in the head-to-head -head between these two clubs. Medhurst keeping it in. Oh, oh that's blood. clever. Very clever. And now Murphy can have a shot at goal. As I said before, Medhurst has continued to try in the last mm. quarter. He's Join been up. their one focal point. Quarter, that, thanks. Especially up. after uh, after three-quarter time that's continued that's to try, it. kick one himself and uh, now given one away. Well, finished the day with respectable numbers, Paul Medhurst. 18 kicks and 11 marks at the moment. As Ryan Murphy tries to ensure that they're finished with an element of pride, pushing it wide right, Tigers elect to keep it in. This is Graham heading for the boundary line, finds it and then some. There's an article written in the paper a couple of days ago, it might have even been yesterday, about goal kicking and the fact that uh, we continue to miss easy goals as AFL footballers. Well, if you compare what happens in our game to what happens in uh, NFL, they just expect every shot to go through. They bring on a bloke, they pay highly, and his job is to kick goals. Well, we're not a specialist. It's a bit more, ours a bit more like a golfer. Everybody has to putt, everybody has to drive. But you're still the best players can convert when it counts. But having said that, I don't think there's a player who hasn't got a skeleton or two or three in his closet missing the goals that we all should have kicked. The human element gets you every time. And this is those possessions you were talking about, Jared. Trash possessions makes the uh, scorecard look a hell of a lot better than uh, what it should be. Grover told to get a move on. Final minute of this one. Dockers have finished with a three goal to one last quarter, but might as well just bomb a talk. It's kryptonite, that 50 metre arc. They just can't penetrate it. Now they do. Medhurst, 18 kicks today. No handballs. Gets a free now, and he's not going to hand pass it now. That would make, if you're counting, 42 kicks for the year and no handballs. As Where is he? Dwayne Russell pointed out last week, he is the lowest average handballer in football history just 1.2 hand passes a game lowest ever of any player to have played the game and he's not even keeping up to his average today he hasn't even reached the one of the 1.2 well the great gary ablett didn't like to give off too many handballs and in a similar vein a spectacular forward not as tall as uh, as some Although uh, Gary did play up on a half forward flank and also on ball at stage, so had to give out a few in his early years. But when he uh, went to full forward, he didn't give too many out, Jared. No, I've actually played uh, with him in a state game, his first state game on the wing. He kicked, I think it was seven goals, five from the wing. And his handball tally <laughs> was a bit similar to Paul Medhurst. You got a sore neck just watching him bomb drop punts from outside 50. I think mean, he's one of the best and longest top punts the game's ever seen. Medhurst with one goal through. And that might do a scoring wise on an afternoon. The Dockers will be keen to erase from their memories. And while for the Tigers it hasn't been a finish with a flurry, nonetheless, a third consecutive victory. The margin will be impressive 48 points. So it will take their percentage right up and it sets them up for a date with St Kilda next week at the Telstra Dome that could have that stadium packed to capacity final seconds now Gasp has been good he'll clear the danger zone the Dockers with a mark through Longmuir 
He'll be too far out to score. The siren will sound, and the Tigers have won three in a row. 14-16 to 7-10. It was a thrashing. Longmuir's talk to finish with is short. And the Richmond fans celebrate again. predominantly staying to the finish celebrating they led throughout kicked the opening goal two minutes in through Trent Noble and did not trail 25 points to the good at quarter time Troy Simmons catches up with old friends 20 points at half time and they blew the game away with a six goal to none third quarter three wins in a row this team that was down and out with 14 consecutive losses to finish 2004 and suddenly in the upper reaches of the top eight. Let's go down to ground level with Wayne Schwoz. Yes, one of those unheralded players that Wayne mentioned throughout the course of the afternoon was Ray Hall. Big job on Matthew Pavlich, but uh, you'll probably be humble, but reasonably happy with your job this afternoon, shutting down one of the key playmakers for the Dockers. Yeah, it was a pretty happy with it. It was a big job for me, but I got a lot of help down there from Mark Graham and Greg Tippin at times, jumping back, cut off their lead, so it made it a lot easier for me. Very disciplined in the performance this afternoon. You talk about a bit of help, but I tell you, a player that's really stepped up there after a, a, a terrible year last year, Darren Gasper, getting very close to his good form again. Yeah, absolutely. The, the fact that we can have Darren back there playing well and on one of their better forwards makes it a lot easier for us. Now, the Saints next week, uh, they've got over the Demons this afternoon, but that shapes as a big match for the club, a chance to win four in a row. Yeah, it is a big match for us. We set today for a huge, that's a huge match for us, but yeah, next week's important again. And Terry's influence and confidence seems to continually build week after week. That's right. When you keep winning, then it, just, it just follows on and follows on, and it just makes it a lot easier to, to get on top. Congratulations, Ray. Enjoy the win. Thanks so much. I think that kid's excited there. He got Browning's football. But anyway. Yeah, good to see. Smiles all around from the Tiger Army. 14, 16 to 7 goals, 10. Nathan Brown, just another day out, really. 21 kicks, 13 handballs, 12 marks. In the end, he's goal kicking, the only thing that let him down. Two goals, four, and one out of bounds. Between them now, Brown and Richo this year, 27 goals. In four weeks, that's impressive. Two from two for Brownie as captain, and <laughs> I'd honestly say, best game I've seen him play. I think yeah. uh, he was sensational today. Four goals as well little concern there with Chris Hyde with a oh, ice pack on what may be a hamstring he had 23 possessions after we mentioned 29 last week just having a great start to the season the 22 year old isn't this great for the horrible year that they had last year yeah I'm pleased for Wayne Cam we just see him on screen he put in a uh, in a year that uh, from hell last season and uh, going out as captain, he just wanted one more year where he just wanted to play footy and uh, wanted to probably get a couple of wins on the board. Well, he's got three in a month, and he'll be looking forward now to the next month of footy, and I reckon that wouldn't have happened uh, in his career over the last couple of years, looking forward to a couple of extra games. He's using him in a manner on and off the bench, yet he's still racking up his 17, 18, yep. 20 possessions. I think he had 24 last week coming off the bench, so... Uh, Using him well, Terry Wallace. It's amazing what a couple of wins can do for a club. Yep, they'll be up to at least fifth place on the ladder. And are they going to sing the song or go straight into the meeting room? Don't tell me we're going to start keeping a lid on it now. After three wins in a row. We might be doing that. The song will have to come later, Tiger fans. Stay with us. The door is shut. But they're happy. Eight goals, the winning margin. 14-16 to 7-10. We hope you're enjoying this fully interactive replay on Fox Footy Channel. Coming up after the game, join Clinton Gribus, Jared Healy and Wayne Carey for the Fox Footy Active Wrap. Take a closer look at the game, as well as both coaches' media conferences in full. 
Wednesday on AFL Love Match, host Rebecca Wilson pairs up two AFL legends as former Geelong Premiership star Doug Wade takes on Melbourne Best and Fairest winner Stan Owls. What does PMS stand for? Post post-menstrual situation. <laughs> AFL Love Match, a real test of teamwork. Wednesday on Fox Footy Channel. Thursday on Fox League Teams. Mate, we're actually live. The boys give you the inside word on the AFL. Fevolinko last week struggled for three quarters. Well, that's what he's called. That's what the boys calling. Who's calling him that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> and share their informed and unique look at the game. Uh, yeah, not mate. Not. Woman. Fox League Teams. Thursday on Fox Footy Channel. One, two, three, break time. Five classic comedies. It's too hot. Five nights a week. That's your damn change of life. Five star entertainment. I went through that ten years ago. Then how about a change of personality? Every weeknight from five, catch the Fox Classics Comedy Block. The Golden Girls at five. Remember your hunch about your nephew, Angelo? You said one day he'd be Pope. Dorothy, you gotta pay attention. I said one day he'd sell dope. <laughs> Everybody loves Raymond, 5.30 and 7.30. You kicked me! I did? Oh, right in the garden of good and evil. Home improvement at 6. And let's grudge as a family. <laughs> Double episodes of MASH from 6.30. One, two, three, break time! Spin City at 8. Very trippy stuff. Classic comedies every weeknight, five-star entertainment. I am so excited! The Comedy Block, weeknights from 5, Fox Classics. Undoubtedly, the most outstanding Australian television drama in a long time. The best drama to come out of Australia in 2004. An extraordinary series and one that shames most free-to-air attempts at local storytelling. Nothing short of brilliant. What are you doing? Just waking Daddy up. I missed you, but I love you. Have you ever loved? You know, the word I think you're looking for is scared. Now, W brings you every kiss, every tear, every moment, every episode, every night, in one week. Stop crying all the time. Nominated for five Logie Awards, including Best Drama Series, Most Outstanding Actress, and Most Outstanding Actor. Love My Way, every day. Coming soon to W. An amazing goal. Here's Gazza, the great man. Left foot snap. Oh, A nail-biting finish. Lockett, the most important kick of his career. Any score will do. He kicks into the final. Classic Quarters, Monday on Fox Footy Channel. Weeknights on the Fever, footy's only talkback TV show. We debate all the day's hot topics, talk to the game's biggest names. The umpires have uh, caught on to that one, though, now. And, of course, you can have your say. White Line Fever, weeknight, 7.30 Eastern, on Fox Footy Channel. Yeah, Terry only wants the 22 players who took part to stand in the circle, although Dipper, who's got to dress a little better for his boundary line duties for 3RW, nearly made it 23. Tigers all the way at the MCG this afternoon. Final scoreline, 14-16-100 to the disappointing Dockers, 7-10-52. The third quarter was the key. 20 points the difference at halftime after Fremantle had got on top in the second term. Six goals, two to just one behind in the third quarter. Only two goal kickers in that third term for Richmond. Richo kicked four, Stafford kicked two, and the final term was pretty bland football. The Tigers with one goal, seven. The Dockers, three goals, four. Richo finished with six. He's the leading goal kicker in the AFL this season now. He's got 16. Brown and Stafford each with two, while it was singles all the way, including for the Dockers' seven individual goal kickers. Down to the Tiger Rooms, here's Wayne Schwass. Joel, most of the people would have picked Fremantle, given the fact that they're a serious contender for the finals, a game they had to win.
But after the result today, there's got to be some thought, and I suppose a fair bit of respect given to the Tigers' three terrific, terrific wins against a potential final side in Fremantle this afternoon. Yes, well, I guess the only way you can win back respect is through playing good footy, competitive footy, and winning three wins in a row is great for us, considering, you know, the, the uh, I guess, the low that we've come off. And I think the boys are starting to enjoy their footy a lot more. And that's, you know, that's the crucial thing about footy. It's no good turning up and, and not being competitive for the fans and not enjoying it for yourself. There's a lot of smiles on the faces, especially the players, and that's an important thing. I think... You talk about enjoying your football. You had a, a tough start of the year last year. You found your form again last year in the back line. But notice today that there's a lot of run. There's some experienced players in the name, in name of Mark Graham. You've got uh, Gasper. You've got Ray Hall down there. You've got yourself, Tivendale. Tremendous settled back six this afternoon that pro provided plenty of drive up the field for the Tiger forwards. Yeah, I think what Terry's done is he's come in and used the experience that's in the club as, as well as bringing Mark Graham, Troy Simmons and uh, Trent Noble. So, you know, we haven't gone straight to the draft and, and used, you know, 13 picks to pick up all young guys. Brett Delidio showed today that he will be a good player and uh, Richard Tambling and the other guys, Danny Meyer, will come into the side. But it is the experience in our team that I guess has really kept us going in the back line and to keep Fremantle, I think, to seven goals is, is a good effort. And, you know, it's our home ground. We want to play well here, and when, when a team comes from interstate, we should be, uh, you know, right, right up against them and using our fans to get behind us all the way. Joel, congratulations from us upstairs. Clinton here with Wayne and Jared. We saw Terry Wallace take you in behind closed doors just for a minute or two there. What was the essence of the coach's message? Oh, pretty much that we need to finish games off. Clinton, um, you know, our, our percentage isn't great at the moment. And if we're going to play, you know, good football, we need to play for four quarters. One goal, five or one goal, six in yeah. the last quarter. Inaccuracy can, you know, really hurt you. When it comes to the business end of the season, you do need your uh, percentage right up there. Joel, the big names today, Brown, Richardson were fantastic. But I think the story of the day, Simmons, Noble and also Stafford, they, they have give you a settled lineup in the forward line. Yeah, they, they have, Wayne. Um, using the three tools down there has been really good. And I think you might have missed one in Ray Hall. Um, Matthew uh, Pavlich didn't have a, uh, a very good game at all. And, I, you know, we can attribute that to Ray's tight checking. And he's, he's you know, just all-round good game. I thought he was excellent as well. And, Joel, it's been dubbed Terry's Triangle by Jared Healy upstairs. We know the coach has got a basketball background. It seems like there's a triangle formation there for the big fellas. When one leads out wide, you've got one at centre-half forward, one in the goal square. It was working pretty well today. <laughs> Yeah, it worked well, and, you know, that's that's got to go credit to David King and Terry um, who've put, you know, a few uh, structures into place there. Um, but also, you know, you just got to look at the work rate that those guys put in. Some people think that the midfielders run more than anyone else, but I think Troy Simmons, Matthew Richardson certainly put in the yards, and I think last week um, or the week before, Troy was actually tracked around, and he covered 14 and a half kilometres, which is just exceptional for a big man. Gee, Wayne never covered that in his play days. Joe, I'll let you get away. Congratulations. Well done. Thanks, guys. Having a terrific season. 27 possessions against the Hawks in round two, 25 last week, another 20 possessions today for Joel Bowden. Clinton, I thought it was interesting just having the camera go around the circle to watch how this side has changed uh, significantly. Yep. Had the names Noble, Graham from Hawthorne, Simmons from Frio, uh, Brown from the Bulldogs, Gasper, he's been there a long time, yep. but uh, originally from the Swans, and Stafford also from the Swans. I mean, it's really a reflection of a modern-day side. Uh, to have an impact as a coach, you've got to change the structure a bit through personnel, but you've also uh, got to utilise those players that you've already got at the club. Let's you... check the results. Sorry, Wayne, Sorry, we've got to right. check the, uh, the other two results if Wayne Schwoss hasn't given them all away for everybody. <laughs> uh, we'll t tell you to look away now because we've got replays coming up for various stations. That was a surprise then. What were you going to say? <laughs> no, I was going to say, Jared, you used a key word. You used a key word, structure. And uh, Fremantle Dockers, let's not make mm. excuses for them. They didn't play well today. They mucked around with the ball, but they lost a lot of their structure when they lost Carr and also Polak. And you loved seeing a pack at Sinar 4, didn't you? That was the biggest uh, time. You got a bit of spring in your step. A few blokes going up and kick the kick. Great. A pack at centre half yeah. forward. Bring it back. Watch the high contact there, Jared. That was close <laughs> to a free kick. Uh, we're sticking around for our digital subscribers if you'd like to press red. For everyone else, we're going to leave you from the MCG on a terrific day for the Tigers. They've won three in a row now. Yeah, they're getting excited, trust me. 14-16 to 7-10, the final scoreline. They're smiling, and why not? Congratulations, Richmond.
up next, Fox Footy Active with Clinton Gribus, Wayne Carey, Jared Healy and Wayne Schwass with a full wrap-up of the game and both press conferences exclusively live. And you're with us, Terry Wallace, Chris Connolly coming up. Interesting press conferences, no doubt. And as you just saw out there, one of the dying arts of football these days, having a kick on the ground with your mum, your dad or your mates after a game. And we must have two or 3,000 people out on the MCG right now. And isn't that great? It is great. And we spoke about uh, young Dodd, who came here uh, yesterday, yeah, took photos yeah. of the grandstand. I mean, to be able to do this, I think, is fantastic for the fans. And actually great to see Richmond kicking balls into the crowd yeah, so some yeah. of those young kids uh, actually uh, get to take home a football i think that's a great concept coming back into footy it's a sea of yellow and black at the moment i'm not sure we can pick out any structure out there at the, <laughs> the, fl the flood is on in, huge. the flood is on in earnest there look at that that's a that's a lower reaches of the later game now we will be talking about um the results from elsewhere we've given you the chance to have lookaways but now in our foxtel and uh, digital active component we will be talking about the other matches as well and next week with St Kilda having thrashed Melbourne by 52 points what a mouth-watering prospect we'll be there from five o'clock next Sunday on Fox footy St Kilda and Richmond going to be close to a packed stadium mm. Saints are obviously back in some form Tigers have won three in a row that's going to be a beauty with this new look forward line of Richmond and uh, St Kilda being a little bit light on down back with a mm -hmm. few injuries uh, Richmond big chance against the Saints and who would have thought that yeah coming yeah. into this year yeah, it's a, it's a mouth-watering uh, contest coming up. No Luke Penny. If they can't get Penny back, then uh, the Richmond forward line looks even more potent. Mm. But you've got to pay great credit to the Saints. They've been on the mat to some degree. Melbourne were highly fancied, and uh, yep. they'll be devastated and uh, disappointed that they couldn't roll over St Kilda and to fall away so badly as they did yeah, in the quite, final close quarter. Close to three-quarter time. Very disappointing result for the uh, Demons. So... It's going to be one of those seasons, Wayne. We had uh, the Demons written in for a flag for the first time since 1964 last week, and now all of a sudden it's the Saints going to win one for the first time since 66. Hasn't there been some, some upsets? Hawthorne yeah, getting up. Yeah. Now St Kilda absolutely flogging well, Melbourne, that, really, in the last quarter. Who would have thought? Essentially, the three underdogs won today. Mm. With Adelaide getting past Sydney, most people had Sydney down in their footy tipping competitions. Most people had Fremantle here. Not me, Clinton. Well, I, know, I know you told us to get on board pre-game. Uh, talking about the Saints defensively, how are they going to counter Matthew Richardson next week? Because the big man was in touch today. You said at one point he could have kicked 10. He finished with six goals, two, and one out of bounds. And uh, nine marks, 17 possessions. And again, he just want, he didn't want the ball. He demanded the ball today. It's just great to see the ball getting into Matthew Richardson, one out. He took a few uncontested <laughs> marks, but more importantly, took some contested marks one-on-one -on -one with Parker. And that's what the crowd comes to see. Not Joe the Goose is over the top, <laughs> but they come to see Matthew Richardson one out in the goal square against his opponent. And just to the, just to give the umpires a little rap here, great yeah, to see them yeah. not give Tiggy Touchwood free mm. kicks when a guy is stronger than his opponent. Hudgston, Swartz and Maguire are the three talls for St Kilda. They played Brett Voss up forward today, who mm. uh, can take a moderate tall. Kicked three goals in the first quarter. Yes, he did. Uh, did a good job early. But you would still say they're undersized compared yep. to what Richmond has uh, the potential to throw forward. Isn't a week a long time in football? This time last week, we were saying, well, they were probably lucky, Richmond, to get over the Bulldogs, although they had a good win. Now we're saying they could finish in the, uh, yeah. in the top eight purely because Noble, Stafford, Richardson all stand yep. up. Just going to write that one down, Glenn. A week's a long, long time, time in football. It's going to be a coach if you keep throwing yeah, yeah, those yeah. out. Yeah, I think it's a uh, it's a pretty old one, that one, isn't it, really? The, the coach is shortly, but from Batman to Robin on the way of the highlights, and Nathan Brown, you, you made the call. You, you've rarely seen him play better than he did today. 22 kicks, 12 hand passes, 34 positions in all. Six of them contested, 13 marks. He kicked four goals, and uh, Jared said in the break, the great thing about uh, Nathan Brown was that he actually give goals away. He's not a greedy yep. player. We talked about Medhurst, not saying that yeah. he's a greedy player, but he doesn't handball a lot. At times today, Nathan Brown actually uh, give the ball when he probably shouldn't have, bringing his younger yeah. players he into play. He went out of his way to uh, make other players play well around him, and uh, Dean Lady uses that as, I guess, a definition of the shin bone of spirit. Players who can make those around them play better. I know Cole Kinnear was very big on that in his coaching career. It's been a thread that goes that uh, has lived at the Carlton yeah. Football Club. I'm not sure if it's strong there now, but under Robert Walls and Cole Kinnear and that era of uh, the Carlton regime, it was a very strong motive. And how'd you assess the game of Mark Coglin today? 21 possessions for Mark Coglin. We mentioned the defensive assignments that he's had in recent times and again, he looked pretty good. Well, for the midfield, you just have to say that uh, Coglin has 
taken a, uh, a new step as a player. He was very much an attacking player in his first year. Last year, he missed most, but uh, he went up against Paul Hazelby, who uh, we all rate so highly, a very creative player, and he took Hazelby out of the game. And effectively, Hazelby with 10 possessions and Pavlich with just uh, nine possessions, I think it was, in fact, six possessions. That's game over for uh, the Fremantle Dockers when they go in with three of their better players missing. That's right. Coughlin on Hazelby was uh, was a great matchup for us because uh, we, we probably expected that. Hazelby, Coughlin, both football brains. Mm. Uh, today, Coughlin just too hard. Troy Simmons, we're going to hear from him shortly. What about his game? Look, uh, actually, I missed him when I mentioned the other three yeah. talls. He was another one that uh, that stood up today. And when he's marking the ball uh, forward, he's <laughs> he just adds another string to the Richmond Football Club. Mm. He's uh, he's very mobile. He can go into the ruck. He can play a kick behind play. He's, he's an integral part to this Richmond side. Is their forward line structure then the tallest of just about any club when they run the, oh, by the triangle? Yeah. By miles. I think only the West Coast with uh, the likes of Gardner, Lynch. And they play CB as well. They've also got McDougal there yep. that they can play tall. They, they can match up uh, or, or stru structure up pretty tall if they like, but they tend not to use them all at the one time. Mm. And they've got leading players. Simmons is probably the only leading player of the lot, although we saw Stafford do a little yep. bit of leading. Richo will get on the burst, but uh, he goes back and forward. Not, not bringing this up because they're my old club, but the Kangaroos can actually go quite tall. If Corey McKernan stands up, you've got McKernan, Rocker, Thompson, mm. Petri. And they've been playing Lee Brown down back and, because uh, of that. Yeah, so they can, uh, you know, the Kangaroos can also have that damaging mm. forward line uh, as Richmond showed today. Uh, can be match winning. Yeah, and one key element of it, and he would have enjoyed today, used to play with the Fremantle Dockers, Troy Simmons with Wayne Schwoz. Well, Troy, big game this afternoon against your old side. You hadn't really hit your straps, but today was just a revelation. You seemed to enjoy yourself. Yeah, I did. I uh, suppose I was a bit more pumped up this game and just really wanted to come out with a win and you know I was I was only going okay and uh, thought I got off to a really good start and helped the boys out and took a few grabs and and uh, died out a little bit in the later half of the game but here we uh, I think everyone sort of sort of kicked chase in the end and we uh, should have really uh, hurt them. Now you've probably had your skeptics myself included at times the concern that Noble Stafford as well as Simmons in the forward line or in a Richmond side along with Matthew Richardson but I'd have to say that it went a long way today to say that it can actually work the way it was set up in a foot triangle formation worked yeah. exceptionally well. Yeah, with you know, Steph, Steph is so vogue. He's, he's very smart down forward and he can take a grab and, and, and Nobes is, I think, improving all the time with his work around the ground. So, you know, if we can cash in with one or two each, you know, during the game like we did today, it's, uh, you know, it will cause headaches for the opposition, so. Now, I noticed during the course of a match, uh, you would float down from centre-half forward where you were lining up before a bounce or in general play more specifically and just prop yourself there at centre-half back. Is that something that Terry gives you freedom to do or it's a decision that the coaches uh, instructed you to do? Yeah, no, it's something when uh, the opposition get a bit of a run on, kick two or three goals, um, I just sort of push back and and uh, sit behind the play and try and stop their run. And as soon as we get one back, I'm usually you know, back in the forward line again. So it's been something we've been doing since the start of the season and it's working all right. What was the coach's instructions? Because sometimes a player against his former side can be a bit too enthusiastic. Did he say anything specifically before today's match against Fremantle? Uh, he just said go out and enjoy it. And uh, you know, don't, don't over try too much. And just go out and play footy. And uh, yeah, that's sort of... I took that advice and... And enjoy you did. Well done. Congratulations on the win. Thanks, mate. Ta. Thanks, mate. Where uh, nothing went right? No, no. It was uh, one of the poorest performances um, I've been involved in. The first quarter, we structured up tall. Uh, we didn't honour our leading forwards. We tend to bomb away a bit. And uh, that played into Richmond's hands and they had a significant lead. So we reshuffled the forward line the second quarter and uh, had a smaller forward line and we outscored um, we outscored Richmond in the second quarter. So it, you know, even though we're three goals down or so at half time, we were confident that um, we started to use the ball a bit better and if we could do that, um, you know, we could go on with the game. But, you know, to Richmond's credit, first 10 minutes of the third quarter, they really blew us away. They jumped on our errors. They really won the ball around clearances. I think that's an issue for us. You know, four weeks in a row we've been beaten at clearances and, you know, it just uh, puts enormous pressure on your back line and doesn't give your forwards the opportunities they're looking for. 
What's the most disappointing part of that, Chris? Oh, just our ball use. I mean, if you can't kick the ball 25 metres and hit some, someone or absorb some minimum pressure and, and uh, maintain possession with the handball, well, you know, any, any type of ball movement from the team is going to break down. And that was the most disappointing thing. And it's like, you know, there's no point structurally, tactically, anything you can do if we can't kick the ball 25, 30 metres uh, to a leading player or a player who's free. What causes that make confidence? <sighs> well, there's a decision making and a mental aspect. I think confidence plays its part. Uh, some players have got to improve their kicking. You obviously had a huge week last week with the Derby and you lost three players, you know, as late as draws just before the game. Does, it, does that come into it at all? Look, there's no excuses. There's no excuses at all. And I don't expect anyone around the club to make it. We've, we've played some good football the last three weeks. Um, today was our worst performance. We're mindful that, you know, I'd spoken about Lee Matthews had said the same thing against um, about Brisbane, that they'd been disciplined and, and played quite well. And, you know, they, they played really poorly yesterday. And uh, I reflected on that. You know, fourth week in, it doesn't mean that, you know, your, your performance is going to go up 5% because parts of it has been OK. Um, we're, we're off the boil. It's the most disappointing thing, Chris, in many ways, that you had a great pre-season with your recruiting and yet there doesn't seem to be on the basis of the evidence today any advances made. Oh, not on the evidence of today, but, you know, we're going to treat this as a, uh, a blip in the year. You know, you have some games where I think, you know, I think every team will have two or three games where they drop their guard and, and pay the price and we're a 5% off the pace today and pay the price and it's a credit to Richmond. Um, Dot looks shocking, but apparently it's not as bad as... No, we don't, we don't think it's an anterior cruciate but there's some type of uh, knee soreness. Can you tell us a bit about Polak's knee? We've been told he's the Yeah, we think, he'll, we think he'll suffer some uh, minor surgery. Do you, do you expect the heat to come on you now, Chris, with that sort of performance? Oh, look, it's always on. I mean, I feel that in Perth that the heat's always on the Fremantle Football Club and we've got to stay focused on, you know, improving our team performance. What about you, Perth? What about, about game plan and coaching style and that sort of thing? Uh, I think, well, in Perth, you get heavily scrutinised each week. I mean, free, free man will fill up, you know, 50% of everything going on. So, you know, there's a lot of people in the media who have an opinion on, on different aspects of, of footy and, um, and, and so, that, so they're entitled to it. Um, and it's all about winning and, you know, we've won one out of three at this point. Uh, one, won one and lost three so you know it's very disappointing. Did you go into the game wanting to play the type of position of the style that was played today or did you decide just to make it out? No we, we know that you go into games of football you're going to play a you know it's going to be an environment where you need to move the ball quickly or it's going to be an environment where you need to hold the ball up and that depends what the other team do it depends on the playing environment at that point in time and sometimes you go from you know using the ball, drawing players out of your forward line and then looking to move it in quickly. And, you know, that's where experience plays its part, you know, and we feel that, you know, we're starting to some, develop some experience in our midfield. Uh, but, you know, your ball use is going to undo all that. All that. What did you say to him after? <clears throat> oh, look, I spoke about the disposal and I spoke about... Um, you know, we've really got to get our heads around um, being more consistent in our approach, you know, and we've never aimed at, you know, the eight. We've always aimed at trying to be a great team. And, you know, we've backed in a lot of, a lot of players to become great players in the AFL and, and great players by being part of a consistently consistent winning team. And, um, you know, you need 22 players pulling their weight and we didn't have that today and you know the players have really got to challenge each other you know that you know can all slip by very quickly and they've really be got to I think we've got to really challenge each other make no excuses never accept mediocrity and we need to bounce back from this did you wrestle with the idea of um, throwing Pavlich into the action a bit more <sighs> yeah and also playing him back yeah. but um, you know he'd look threatening would bounce back in the second quarter. You know, you go into the third quarter. 
And then the last quarter, we pretty much went one on one, and you know that allowed Richmond to create a lot of numbers in our forward line. So I think that helped us score. Uh, but the damage were done in those bursts, and you know you reflect back on the, the games we've lost, and you know we've dropped our guard for probably 10 minute windows, and today it was a couple 10 minute windows we paid the price. Richmond a better side this year, from what you can see. Well, you always have the honeymoon of the of the, um, the you know the new coaching staff. Um, you know, Troy Simmons is going to help the new recruits, um, so. You know, you'd expect them to move forward on the back of that. I mean, you get the early draft pick, so you should move forward. What factor do you reckon that travelling played on the loss tonight? No, no factor. No factor. The travelling, whatever happened last week, any players not playing, no excuses. And we showed at times, for brief periods, that we could hold our own. But when the momentum swung, we let them in for too many goals. The, the ball coming out of the forward line much easier than it has done for years under you. <laughs> yeah, I think Paul Medhurst and has really improved his defensive pressure and, and Jeff Farmer and, and the guys work back. But, you know, Richmond were getting a lot of numbers out there and they're really running the, the lines hard, certainly a lot harder than us. And when you aggressively run out of defensive 50 at the MCG, you're going to get a, a fairly big reward. Thank you. Thanks. And honest and naturally very disappointed Fremantle Docker coach Chris Connolly 14 16 to seven goals 10 the final score and he spoke about Matthew Pavlich there outside of Stephen Dodd who was injured early no one had less possessions in the match than Matthew Pavlich three kicks three hand passes and he spent every minute on the ground for you can't have one of your classiest players that far out of the action for so long no it wasn't one of his uh, better days and we uh, spoke during the call Jared that I'm not sure whether uh, Pavlich and a few of the other key forwards and Medhurst I thought played uh, quite well and, mm. and continued to uh, to come up to the ball but I'm not sure whether they know when to bail out of a lead mm. um, when you know you've got to look at the player with the ball when you know you're not going to be used you have to stop turn around and get to where the ball's going and uh, I'm just not sure he did that too well today but he's had a good season mm. we know he's a gun player everyone's entitled to a poor sure. one um, and he had one of those today. I reckon today we saw how much they're missing Troy Simmons. I know I said it uh, mm -hmm. through the call, but I've always... Uh, no, well, we've all known that uh, Matthew Pavlis can play forward. He, he can play full forward, centre-half forward, but I don't think he's ever shown that he can absolutely demand and command it. And, and one out in a flooded forward line, it's almost impossible, given that he doesn't take the, the pack marks. Um, Centre half back to me is a position that uh, just reeks of Matthew Pavlich. And yeah. if you had a Troy Simmons, you'd be able to settle those down. Now, now all of a sudden, they just look one key player short at the moment, the Dockers. If you play centre half forward like Pavlich does, I, I don't think you can afford to be one dimensional. You've got to be able to call the ball in like a Richardson did today and be one out and use your body. If you just continual, continually lead, mm. You, uh, it's very easy to stop. He plays it a little bit like James Hurd played in the half forward line when Essendon were power side, but around him he had Lloyd and he had Lucas. Right now it's Pavlich, and that's it. That's right. There's Pavlich, there's mm. the Farmer, and there's Medhurst, and there's a couple of young kids down there. There's no other bulky player there who uh, Pavlich can bounce off or use as a decoy. They've got Carlton coming to town next Saturday. The Dockers with just one win from the opening month of the season. Let's have a look at how the ladder shapes up after the opening four rounds only two unbeaten teams now with melbourne's loss today the eagles and the kangaroos stand at the top four and zero the kangaroos playing hawthorne at the mcg next saturday the eagles heading to brisbane to take on the lions adelaide impressing everyone three wins from four starts melbourne with their first loss and richmond now their percentage above 100 at three and one in the eight with two wins geelong st kilda and sydney the draw could be pivotal either way for Carlton and Port Adelaide. And everyone with a win now. So it's Essendon on the bottom of the ladder on percentages. And you look at the Dockers, their percentages slipped from 113 entering today's match down to 92.7 now. So that is still such a wide open ladder. That draw for Carlton and Port Adelaide could be interesting. We'll talk more about it later. Terry, smile. You're three in a row. How significant improvement did you see that, Terry, from the, from the past two wins? Oh, well, I think that uh, really every week so far we've got a little bit better each time we've, uh, we've gone out to play. I mean, um, our style of play is 
sort of oh, the graph of our ability to get the ball inside 50 and put pressure on sides by just getting it in there has, uh, has risen every time we've played. So that's been a, uh, a pleasing aspect. So that style of play, um, yeah, look, as I sort of said from day one, we thought we were in reasonable shape going into round one and it was a disaster and you know, we've just gradually improved since. Can you see the confidence returning, particularly in that third quarter? They really seem to be a lot of confidence out there. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I suppose winning in, uh, in any uh, form of sport I mean, gives you that sort of uh, that confidence and uh, we're getting better in uh, those areas and obviously gaining a little bit of confidence with that. I mean, it's, it's just dealing with that. I mean, the last quarter was really disappointing for us. Uh, yeah, we had an opportunity to really put some uh, cream on the cake and uh, we weren't able to do so. So that was, that was the disappointment in the day. But uh, in general, uh, you know, I thought there were some really good signs. We were really pleased with the combination of the, the big men today. They all seem to actually do their part. Yeah, I've, look, I've been, I've been reasonably happy with them. And it's been everyone else that sort of uh, hasn't been. I, I don't know what people have expected. I mean, I, I wonder whether people are expecting them to come out and kick three and, you know, three and four goals or uh, um, do that sort of thing. I mean, I think leading into this game, we are the third highest scoring side. And, what I thought the big guys had given us is they'd given us a structure that straightened us up. And while we were scoring, um, I didn't mind whether they weren't scoring, but uh, you know, there was obviously a couple of them that were able to you know, get involved today as well. And you know, that's a cream on the cake if they can actually uh, add to our school line as well. What about the um, defensive pressure from you forwards today, especially at 3 kicking? Do you really seem to unsettle them? Uh, look, it's always an indicator of whether guys have come to play. I think uh, last week we were uh, pretty ordinary in our uh, in our ability to, in the zone defences, and uh, so this week, you know, it was uh, I suppose an area of uh, of real concentration and you know the guys were pretty good in that but I, you know, I think things you know the little aspects of the game the manning the mark the chase outs the uh, those pressure aspects that usually tells you whether your sides come switched on uh, we saw this as being a very very important game for ourselves we hadn't won a home game for I think eight or nine outings at home um, come off two wins in a row uh, just to uh, to be able to back that up uh, to get a, a home ground game against an interstate side we just sort of saw it as being vital for us to, uh, to win this week. So, I mean, our concentration from the second the game finished against the Western Bulldogs, it wasn't celebration mode at all. It was that this game needed to be uh, ticked off. And, uh, you know, I thought in that aspect, the guys did a great job. Terry, what's it like coaching Richard? Great. Yeah, look, he's a champion player. What, is, what, no, what, but, do you, what do you... But, I mean, you know, he's so mercurial. And, you know, he'd be probably one of the, one of the most... Uh, exciting players you've coached. What's it? What? What? Do you, what oh, what's look, it like I in mean, the coach's box watching him? Well, you don't give him any more attention than you give anyone else. I mean, when you're in a coach's box, all you're doing is making sure the structure's right, making sure that you know people are following the uh, the plans and the actions that you uh, you put in place. And I mean, whether it's the you know, other players that have had at Western Bulldogs, I've had some pretty fair players that have coached in the past. I mean, he's just another one of those guys, and he, he follows the instructions or he, or he doesn't play. I mean, that's purely and simply the way it was. There was one time there in the uh, the game where he kicked three in a row, I think, in the third quarter and played on. And, uh, you know, I sent the message out to him, he's in good form, but if he plays on again and so 50, he comes off. I mean, we've got game rules and game structures and plans that he has to play by, you know, as much as anyone else. And whether he's in form or, uh, or playing, he plays to the, uh, the same rules as the other blokes, or otherwise the thing falls apart. Do you think That's he's true. benefiting from the big blokes? Do you think he's benefiting from the extra big blokes around him? Oh, look, we... The, the one thing that I sort of said to him, I sort of said, I think that he will like um, the structure that we would put in place for him because we'd give him more ability to be one out with his direct opponent. And I think that uh, him playing where he's more mobile has allowed him to, to be more one out with his opponent. I just thought uh, in the last 12 months, uh, a bigger body, Richo, planted in the, uh, in the goal square was... Yeah, good in the fact that he kicked 60 goals, but everything went through him. But it also, what it allowed is it allowed other sides to have counter-attack footy against him and, you know, get two and three back and just fall back on top of him without any other alternatives there. Well, we've got the other alternatives now and we've got Richo sort of on his bike being able to do what he does best. Is that a team rule not to play on inside 50? But it's for Richo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you said before you, it was disappointing. <laughs> The, the last quarter was disappointing because you could have totally obliterated it. Yeah. How, how disappointing was it? Oh, look, I got the guys straight in after the game and, uh, 
and had a chat to them about, uh, you know, it's all very well. We've, uh, we've tried to create a little bit of an atmosphere after games and winning games by you know, handing balls uh, out to, you know, the kids and the supporters that come along. But as I said to them, we want people staying for the right reasons. We want to stay because we're playing good footy, not because we're giving away a couple of free balls at the end of the game. So, uh, you know, I just sort of thought we'd let, just let ourselves down a little bit. Look, we still had, still had uh, probably a quarter of our inside 50s in the last quarter there, so it wasn't necessarily us not winning the ball or dropping off in that. We had uh, eight scoring shots, so that side of it was all right. It was just really the conversion. In saying that, in fairness to the guys, I mean, there was only four goals kicked down that end all day, so it was a lot more windy than what people would have thought so from the outside. It was pretty tough. I was going to ask you, do you forgive them a little bit because their effort was great all day? You can get a bit untidy with fatigue too, and they did work hard. Yeah, um, both. I, I, I don't think you can ever lower the bar, so I think you've got to keep the bar up. But in, look, when you go through the half hour, you sit there and sort of say, geez, it was a disappointing way for the game to finish it. It just yeah. didn't have any um, any exuberance or spark in it for, the, for your supporters at the end of the game. But probably an hour later, and once you sort of sit down and you actually go through the numbers of what was you know, the results down that end, and you have a look at it, yeah, you probably forgive them a little bit. So, Terry, is there any danger in this club that small peaks right now can be seen uh, maybe as big mountains, conquering big mountains? Um, not certainly from the playing aspect of it. I don't think the club and the playing aspect of it uh, is that way at all. And they are small peaks at the moment. Let's face it, I mean, we fell over the line in two games. We've had a, uh, a win today against a side who had, you know, two or three pull out. You know, before the start of the game and interstate side sort of coming across. So from that aspect, I don't think that by any stretch of the imagination we should be getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, we've got St Kilda and Port over the next couple of weeks. I mean, I think that'll, uh, you know, show us exactly where we are. But uh, it's actually all right to win. You're actually yeah. allowed to feel good about yourself. You know, I, mean, I, know, I know the competition doesn't give you much time to actually be able to do that. But uh, You're talking as much about the periphery as the... Yeah, no, I, look, I, I think that uh, so long as we're managed in what we're doing, I, I think that uh, you know that's where that's where we'll be as, as a group. And uh, look, it's it's pleasing. I mean, these guys have uh, been battled around the ears for the last couple of years by all and sundry, and it's actually pleasing for them to get a couple of results. But we always said that the first four weeks was opportunity. I mean, we were playing a couple of sides from last year who were the lower sides in the competition. We, were, we had four games within Melbourne and uh, Metropolitan. We had a couple of home games in and amongst that. We had one against an, an interstate-based side. If we were to mess up the first four weeks, it might have been a long year. So we've actually done the first four weeks OK, and so we ticked that off. But now we've got some new challenges, uh, and they're going to be you know, quite different challenges. Terry, what did you make of Chris Connolly's comments in the lead-up to this week? I was probably a little bit, bit surprised, but, uh, you know, I just sort of thought uh, probably has to look for something else to deflect the loss on this time around. I mean, I thought, to me, to jump straight into it, uh, that was what it was more about. It was probably deflecting uh, a lost opportunity last week. Terry, in terms of the key things that you wanted to achieve, though, in the first four weeks, do you think the club's done that at this stage, like possessions inside, 50, uncontested balls, all that sort of stuff? Oh, we have, we have an absolute formula that we have as our formula for uh, for success and there are some points of that that we've achieved and there are others that we still haven't uh, yet to uh, to master so uh, I mean we're not prepared to go sort of public on what that formula is but it is a base formula which has about four or five things involved with it and we can just tick off if we do them, we win games. I mean, there's no uh, if, buts or maybes about it because, I mean, they stack up and, look, every side's got them. I mean, so it's nothing, uh, nothing, uh, you know, sort of you know, all spangled up or anything like that. But just um, we sit there and at the moment we're achieving most of those, but we're not achieving them all. And in certain days, like one day we have achieved and the other days we haven't. So, so such as, like, what sort of things, though, without... Saying when you're achieving them, if you don't want it. Well, they're, they're our internal uh, mechanisms. I mean, you know, that's up for us to know and others to try to work out. Terry, you step up a, a division, don't you? You played a preliminary finals four, years, four weeks ago, it was a disaster, and now you've got another one. Is this a fair gauge of uh, where you're going to be at? Oh, it will be, uh, no doubt in the world, and uh, I think that our guys ought to look forward to that. And we were really hoping to uh, to get the results that we now find ourselves in, so that we have a 
finals type atmosphere again to see see how we went because last time we built up a finals type atmosphere we fell flat in our face and uh, it gives us another another chance and another opportunity and that's what this competition's about it's just about opportunities and uh, you know making the most when those chances come by. All clear on the injury front, Terry Wallace. Just chatting with the press boys. All smiles. Eight goal win for the Tigers. And you can talk to Terry Wallace Wednesday night on White Line Fever right here on Fox Footy. Give me a call then. 1300 65 65 25. We're hearing Cam Bruce a shoulder injury from that opening minute of that Melbourne St Kilda game, which no doubt you'll be talking more about on the couch. Who's on tomorrow night? Glenn Archer uh, is on tomorrow night, and he's in great form as a midfielder. He's finally been elevated in his final career, mm. final years to uh, the midfield role. There's been a lot of talk about Glenn Archer uh, getting back to his best form. Yeah. I've never known him to get 20 possessions in a game, and a couple of weeks ago, 24. So he's in career best form, mm. not back to... Uh, any old form. I think in his prime, he averaged around 11 or 12. Yeah. He's just racking them up. He'd be loving it. I think we're going to be talking a bit about the Tigers too, Clinton, because yeah. what we did uh, see here today was the emergence of a side that uh, could quite comfortably uh, bring through 100,000 people in a big match by season's end if they can continue mm. to rack the uh, the wins up. Well, there could be 50,000 there next Sunday. You'll see it right here on Tiger TV, a.k.a. Fox <laughs> Footy Sunday. What's that? Four in a row now. Join us from 5 o'clock next Sunday for Richmond and St Kilda. I hope you've enjoyed the broadcast this afternoon. I'll be back with the winners from 7.30 tonight with the highlights of all eight matches played this weekend. Our Fox Footy Sunday team, produced by Tony Fox, directed by Gary O'Keefe for Wayne Schwartz. For Jared, Wayne, I'm Clinton. We'll see you next time. Good night.